Greetings, everyone. <laughs> and welcome to a bestest and worstest episode of Monster Party. Monster Party! Monster Party! And the worst! <laughs> It's wow. Crazy. It is. Whew. After wow. 900 tries, we're finally starting the show. Okay, boy, it's, great. It's, it's, boy, it's warm. It is. Not... <laughs> now you're getting a little warm? Earlier, you were fine. Uh, hey, I, was were like, going, I was having some chills. I'm going back you, and forth. You, you oh. raised your voice, and all of a sudden, you broke out into a sweat. Wow. And speaking of sweat, who are you, sir? <laughs> <laughs> I am sweaty. I'm Matt Weinhold. I'm Sean Sheridan. I'm Larry Stroth. And I'm James Gonis. And for this episode, we decided to eliminate the factor of having a guest. Ooh. Yes. 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 We're got, we don't need it. No. N- not for this. Not for this episode. Right. Yeah. We're all naked and alone. We're all, well, <laughs> who knows what, what'll happen. What is with you? Yeah. Nudity. <laughs> God. Yeah. Like At some nudity. point, I'm going to fill this room with water. <laughs> Sunsy water. No, uh, <laughs> listeners, we are fully dressed. Sean's just spouting out here. Yeah. yeah. Just, just me. Okay. Well, this topic that we're going to do. Yes is one that I think we're all equally proficient at tackling. Okay. Mm -hmm. And this topic is... What is this amazing hot topic? The best and worst of 2019. The best and worst of 2019. That's right. Oh, yeah. Look out, 2019. The best. Right. We're coming after you. It's 2020, and now we're looking back. We're looking back. And, you know, we, a whole cool year things. behind us. Yeah, and then maybe the bad things. There was some good. Yeah. There was some bad. See, yeah. I think you guys, I think there's a lot of good. Yeah, there's, there's a, lot a good of amount best. of good. It's a good yeah, year. Yeah. Just, just, just jump in really quickly. We have said in the past that what a great time to be a, a nerd or be, love science fiction, sure. fantasy, and horror because there's so much out there. Well, and that's one of the problems with doing an episode like this because there's so much out there. And I you know, kind of reviewed everything that came out in 2019. Yeah. And there's just so much. Yeah. And there's yeah. so much I haven't even got to yet. Yeah. There's so many avenues for content now between streaming and theatrical yeah. and web. It's nuts. Yeah. You and- know, know who has time to watch everything? Right. Yeah, there's, there's definitely an embarrassment of riches for, especially for the horror and sci-fi fan. That's yeah. true. So yes. much stuff, so much media, so much t- tons. But I think there's a lot of stuff that we have all gotten to catch up on. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And there's a couple things that we haven't really discussed even a, too a much. Lot, a lot yeah, of things. Yeah. From last year. All right. So how do you want to do this? Does anyone want to jump in with one? Well, why don't I jump in? Okay, all right. I like this. <laughs> wow. Wow. James James Gonis. Gonis. Oh my God. With Whoa. one of the major titles from last year, which we, I don't think, have discussed among ourselves yet, and that is The Rise of Skywalker. Ah, as in Star Wars. You mean Star Wars? Wars? Star, the Rise Wars of Star Wars, Episode 9. Yes. The Rise of Skywalker. Star Wars, The Rise of Skywalker. Who wasn't excited about this film? Well, yeah, and it wasn't that long ago that I we wasn't. did our- Matt, really, you weren't excited about it? Uh, no. It's the whole Star Wars. It's like the 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 end of the Star Wars franchise. If only. Well, were you anticipating it going in? Were you kind of no. so so you weren't looking forward to it after Last Jedi? I was like, all right. Well, well, well me too. I, I have to admit, I I went in with very low expectations, and even when I heard it was coming out, like for me, unfortunately, it's kind of. The release of a new Star Wars film nowadays is that, isn't much. that special to me yeah, anymore. No. I'm fine with them coming out with them, but it's just not the same. No, especially and I do I do think the um, Last Jedi soiled a lot of yeah. my it attitude towards it. Jumped the shark <clears throat> for the series. Yeah, and, yeah. And I did, was not expecting anything, and I uh, stayed away from reviews. I didn't yeah, want to hear much anything too, yeah. about it. I wanted to go in with an open mind. Yeah, mm-hmm. and this. Without giving anything away, yeah, we shouldn't give stuff away. No, no spoilers. But basically, this is supposed to tie up, yeah, everything yeah. that's happened in the the last two movies. Yes, and you know, I I had a jaundiced eye just like you, Matt. But I, I got to say, I was blown away, absolutely blown away. Really? Yes, I enjoyed it thoroughly. I I, don't, I wouldn't say I was blown away. I don't think it's like the best Star Wars film, but I I was pleasantly surprised. You know, there there were no egregious scenes. Like there was no. Uh, Las Vegas planet no. e- equivalent. There was no floating uh, through space. No fucking <laughs> no. no. Nothing was nothing like stood out to me like oh that's stupid. That's bad. No, uh, it played things very safe. Mm-hmm. But what I liked about it was that it did not 
unlike Last Jedi and unlike um, Force Awakens, this movie did not have to rely on the classic older characters. This was very much Ray's film, mm -hmm. and I thought she was great in it. And I, it finally, it, I finally was actually interested in those newer characters. Yeah. Finn actually had something to do this time. Mm -hmm. um, and they had good lines. They had banter. Yes. It was, it was J.J. Abrams, I, th I, I think it was a reaction to Last Jedi. Yeah. I think they almost played it too safe because of that because they, they, they kind of switched things back around a little bit because at the end of Last Jedi, oh, anybody can have the Force and all yeah. that. But then this time, they brought things back to kind of classic themes in Star Wars. But I enjoyed it. I really did. You know. I wasn't expecting to love it. I loved it. I, wow. I loved I, it. I, loved I, it. I can't remember a movie when I didn't want to take a bathroom break. And, and this was one. <laughs> Seriously. Seriously. Like, no, but like, tell wow. me why. What, what was it? What was it God, we are in our 50s. <laughs> well, no, I'll tell you about it. I, but what struck you about it, specifically this one? Well, there, there was momentum. You know, I, It does not let up. It does not let up. That's, scene I, yes. after scene. And I didn't find myself... Again, there were no egregious, stupid right. scenes or ideas. Right. I, I, There's some logic things that there you... There was a few logic things, but nothing that, that got in the fast way Fast and loose me. with the Force all yeah. over the place. Yeah. Well, yeah. that... We see uh, Ray doing certain things with the Force early on, and you wonder why... Wait a minute. Why doesn't she why do this Why don't you do this then? now? There's mm -hmm. a couple of things like that. Yep. But you know what, though? That kind of is throughout all the series to, to a point. It didn't bother so, me. Yeah, yeah. It didn't bother uh, me. Okay. <laughs> All right, Mr. You know, Star Wars hater, let's you, go. Yeah. I don't hate Star Wars. You know that. I like Star Wars. We got the guys, the no, figures right up there on the shelf. You have more of a collection than I do, Matt. See? See? Okay. So I don't hate it. Okay. Yeah. But here's my problem with this movie. Now, Carrie and I went to see it. She hated it. Really? Hated it. Why? Mm -hmm. For the reason that I'm putting it in a special category of it's not terrible, but I don't think it's really great for me. Mm -hmm. And I know that People, when we watched it at the end of the film, people applauded. I think it gave Star Wars, hardcore Star Wars fans, especially fans of that trilogy, mm -hmm. uh, what they were looking for. Yeah, yeah. So I get that. I think, was, I think they were going out of their way to do that. Yes. They really do. And it was, for me, way more entertaining than Last Jedi. Well, so I get that. I get yes, that. Yes. I get that. My problem with it, and Carrie felt the same way, is that about halfway through, I just stopped caring. Because all this feels like just another original Star Wars over again. It's the dark side and the luring to the dark side and then the fighting against the dark side. But, you know, you should come and join the dark side. No, I don't want to come and join the dark side. <laughs> and it's just everything that we've seen. And it's just one more time. And I just didn't. I felt like I've just I've seen this fucking movie over and over again. Well, that comes into the playing it safe thing. I think they were less, right down less, to less yeah. right down to Lando. And what happens in the third act that I don't necessarily want to give away, right. but very reminiscent of the original Star Wars. I think it's a reaction to, if you remember, Last Jedi took some things and turned them upside down. They had Yoda dismissing the Jedi books and all that. Yeah. Like they were burned away. He didn't care. And they have they just did things in Jedi that flipped things around. almost in, in your contrary. Face. That yeah. some people loved and some people didn't. I didn't actually that stuff. I didn't have a problem with all the other bad storytelling and crap. I agree. And I totally characters. agree. Yeah. But that's why I guess for whatever reason they just thought for this one because also it's the end of this trilogy. They played. I mean, yes, maybe it did play it too safe. There are some it's themes not even the, that are this are similar. I guess it, we're saying the same thing when when you say play it safe. What I'm saying is repetitive. It's the yeah. same story yeah. over and over again. And Kylo Ren, I could just do without entirely. <gasps> I think he's a terrible character. He's no. not menacing or interesting. When he puts his helmet back together, I laughed out loud. I went, this is the most absurd, stupid thing. I hated that fucking mask from the very first time I saw it. Oh, oh, sure. You, you'd you say that to his face. You know, <laughs> see, here's what, here's what you oh, miss. Here's wow. what you miss. I got to rubber no. line this room. No, yeah, if, if Kylo Ren existed, <laughs> I, I probably wouldn't <laughs> say anything to him. Here's the stupid him. thing about your comment. Your comment is like, oh, uh, I'm a dumb thing helmet. About yes, my yes, 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 it is. Because if if he was there, Matt, you would go, oh, look at your stupid helmet. It's like this. You're he he. No matter if okay, Super Mario no. showed up at my door, I'd be a little intimidated. Listen, listen. It's like it's like you're saying, 
whoa, I think you're dumb. I think your helmet's ridiculous. Man, it's, it's like, like stupid. People, but but you see, no one's going to say it's stupid. Well, they're all going to, no, they're afraid of him. The I, fear, no, he has the power of the force, the dark side. So you would be perfectly fine then if all of a sudden he's like, I'm so fucking tough and powerful and evil. I'm going to dress up like Pippi Longstocking. And if he <laughs> did, no. And no. he walks down with his little pigtails yes. and he's da, 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 da. And guess what? And it's that, Admiral see Pippi. That see, <laughs> see you, make it, you make it sound like it's a big joke, but the truth of the matter what is, is a joke? no, it's not a joke, Matt, because the helmet, no, putting back the helmet the together hel- with glue? Yes. All uh, shitty. Well, so I gotta say, I'm, was, I'm, I have to decide, stupid. as much as I loved it, I have to side with Matt on this what? Because, I'm, because I'm thinking, look, if he's only wearing the helmet half the time, what's it for? What's the point? It he's, it he's brings so- him. It feels like it brings him closer to his grandfather. It's his, his whoopee. <laughs> yeah, guys, guys, don't you understand? It's like that's how he identifies with his but grandfather. That, like, they don't mind, that, that wasn't like something like, oh, that like took me out of the movie. Or no, it, didn't take it, the movie. it did for me because really? I hated that thing in the beginning. In the oh. beginning, it looked ridiculous. I didn't mind. <laughs> but not. then to have it put together with super glue and then walk around. Oh, and like, yes. There's even a scene where he's walking around with it where I don't know if someone said anything, but it was like, get a load of fucking Captain Weirdo with the helmet. <laughs> yeah, know? no, there was. And, uh, that was funny, I thought. Well, no, well, no. There, there were dissent. In his rank, yeah, I mean, yeah. There were which I like because to... he's flawed. He's a fucked yeah. up and flawed. Yes. I don't. I, the, yes, if it weren't for the force, he's not interesting at all. Hmm. I think Adam Driver is an interesting actor. He's a good. Yeah. I, I'm yeah. not faulting him as an actor. Well, he's, and he's doing the best he can, but I just don't think that character is interesting. Uh, it's it's, thought, it's, yeah. it's really always working at one level, and you know that by the end of this, he's going to turn around. No, and that's no, like, I didn't yeah, know that. Come on. No, no. What, what did you go Have to like? you ever seen a Star Wars movie? Oh, so you're a Star <laughs> Wars expert. No, Matt, I didn't <laughs> know how. No, uh, I thought. Apparently more than you are. No, no oh, oh, really? Oh, oh yeah. Oh, you're a yeah. Star Wars expert. Yeah. You know, that, I have more Star Wars <laughs> figures than you. Is that your convince me no, voice? <laughs> I, I, you know, you have, oh, I've got figures. Yeah, well, those aren't the latest figures. I have the classic <laughs> ones. I have the classic <laughs> What does this Star have to do with screenwriting? I am more. Like, <laughs> I okay, think I'm Matt, more Matt, dedicated. Let me ask you this, well, oh, okay. right, let, let's Sean on. Sheridan Go speak. Ahead. Something. It's okay. Like, my, like my, James no one, has said, um, no one needs my my point. <laughs> it's okay. Like James Shut me said, down. the movie moves at such a clip, and there is nothing egregiously embarrassing about it. I thought um, Daisy Ridley was great. I thought she carries the film. Like she, you talk about like the first film. Let's face it. I mean, Mark Hamill is great, but like in, in the first film. Luke is kind of like this whiny farm, no, farm boy. Right. But Daisy goes through a lot in this film and it's done with a lot of sincerity and passion. I thought everybody did a good job in it. And yeah. there were emotional marks that were not in any of the series. That, yes. Like we talked before about after Han dies that there was no moment. Like Leia embraces Daisy where it's like, wait a minute, it's Chewbacca she should be embracing. And there's a scene in this one when Chewbacca has a moment. Yes, and, right. And I, yes. I teared up. And that was, the, that was a turning wow. point for me in the last third where what again, without giving anything, sissy. without giving anything away, <laughs> I suddenly became more emotionally invested than in any other Star Wars film, including Empire. And I would rank this as the third best one, like Episode Four, wow. Five, mm. and this one. Matt, Matt, if there was no other Star Wars movie, and you went to film school. I didn't. I sat through the credits at the end because I didn't want to walk out of the theater and have people see a 54 year old guy with tears streaming down his face. <laughs> that's how. That's how emotionally involved. And you see, can I say, wait, yeah. I'll give you one scene. Mm-hmm. All right. Yeah. It's my favorite scene in the whole movie, mm-hmm. and it's that moment with Kylo Ren and Han Solo. Awesome. That right. was a great. That was awesome. a great. That was a moment that showed. Adam Driver's acting. Right. And both of them. But I, Matt, thought, I thought was great. And it's not that I, I don't hate those actors. I think everybody's doing the best job they can. I just, to me, it's just tired territory. If none of the other Star Wars movies existed and you just saw this one, though, what would you think? See, I'm trying to look at it as a standalone movie and but, wrapping this trilogy up. I thought it was a good job. Well, what's happened to you? <laughs> Did you lose your joy and sense of wonder? I, I've I've seen it all before. Oh, oh you don't like I, drama? I, no. Oh, but, 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 but it's, it's a, and it's not. By the way, it's not a fair question to say if I had never seen Star Wars, because then you could say that about anything. Well, if I hadn't seen anything that somebody else <laughs> ripped off, then I might enjoy that movie. But 
that doesn't mean that this is a good movie. I had I found myself asking myself that at the Justice League movies. Like if, if you hadn't seen any of the Marvel Universe movies, Justice League would have been a much better movie because you wouldn't have that to compare it to. Maybe. If I had yeah. not seen any superhero thing right. since the 70s and then all of a sudden I walked into Justice League. Right. Right. Yes, but yeah. that's yeah. not how we review I know. movies. <laughs> I know. I know. Yeah, I know. If you didn't see this, yeah, if I had all my memory <laughs> yeah. erased, yeah. Yeah. all of a sudden yeah. I woke if up and my- the only movie that existed in the universe <laughs> was Star yes, Wars- the rise of Skywalker. Would and, you like and, it? And I do. I do want to say this. I understand that if you're a hardcore Star Wars fan and you like this type of story and you like seeing it told again and again and again, then yes, this is much better than the last film. But, you're right. It does move, yeah. so that's good. Though strangely, though, to your point, though, what's interesting is that I think the rise of Skywalker apparently is the one Star Wars film that has the lowest overall. Rating or like uh, aggregate, like, like, yeah, really? yeah, rotten, yeah really? it does, which is strange I they because would love this thing. I know, but I mean, everybody I know have seen it has liked it. I just thought, like I said, I have I to didn't, admit, I didn't hate it, yeah. and, I, and, and I it was one of those movies really where, low expectations. I have to say that I, I, I yeah. would say that I was mildly entertained all the way through. Right. Okay. So I'm not going to say that I I hated it. I don't think it's a right. terrible movie. I think my wife thinks it is, but. There were moments that I was like, oh, that's cool. I enjoyed that. That was a neat scene. Right. There were some fun space battles. and I, I do think, too, I want to get into um, this Can later. I just say, Lando, a little creepster, right? Little, but, but that's little, consistent. Little he's little always creepy. that way. <laughs> yeah, he's, but, he's but, a... but now it's not charming. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I, like, I, like, I like seeing yeah. him again, though. But it's interesting that you said that about doing the same thing over again, because I think when it's a, a, a new theatrical Star Wars film, like the ma- a main film, not like a TV show, not a spin-off film, not uh, an animated thing. There's so much at stake with the Star Wars film that, that there's so much anticipation. That's true. That's expectation. And there's true. so much that you have to stick. There's so much writing stick on in it. there yeah. and so many characters cuz I want to I want to get to it later but like that's why I really enjoy Mandalorian. Well, let's talk yeah. about it now because we're talking about <laughs> yeah. Star Wars. Well, before before we stop talking about no, keep Rise, going. Rise keep of going. Skywalker, yeah, yeah. I do want to say that I hated Last Jedi so much that part of what I carried into this movie was a sense of Okay, I'm probably going to be disappointed, but I want to like it. I want to believe. And right, right. what it had was a lot of fan service. Like, if you're a Star Wars fan, we're going to throw this little thing in, this little thing. Dennis Lawson, one shot of Wedge Antilles in the X Wing or whatever. <laughs> There's probably was. a lot of stuff I missed too, like little. Yeah, okay. Yeah. I, I, I wanted to see him in The Force Awakens. I, I, li- I like that actor. I like that character. It's like, bring back Wedge. Like, <laughs> such a trivial little, little nothing, okay. but there are fans out there who care. And this was, this was throwing those fans like Where's me. Where's Sice Noodles? A bone, okay. <laughs> and Larry, Larry, what do you think of Rise of Skywalker? Yeah. He oh. loved it. He oh, loved it. Oh, I could tell. I'm sorry. Um, yes, thank you, James, for including me. <laughs> no, but where do you, oh, yeah, where we, do you we see just it? Completely <laughs> left you out of this yeah, entirely. You as you're spoke, screaming well, at me about all. action yeah, like, figures. Hey, well, it's like it's you're no point. It's... Screaming in my face. <laughs> About action figures. <laughs> well, look, we, we've deliberately avoided talking about this and in, in other movies until this show. Right, so I right. really want to know what you thought. Like, where, where, do you, where does it rank? Let's hear it. Where does it rank in the Star Wars? Like, yeah. Well, like you, Sean, I was really disappointed with the last one. Right. And so mm-hmm. I went in with my expectations very low. And I brought along my daughter. My daughter did want to see it because, it, look, hey, sure. you got to finish this. She's not a big <laughs> yeah, Star Wars fan. Oh, really? Okay, but she's, right. she's seen the, the last two. Right, right. And she was curious to see where it went. And we also went with Pat Lydon, who, who oh, did yeah, our yeah. audio. I love Pat. For He's our done our audio for our commentaries right. for yeah. uh, yeah, the Shop Factory um, mm-hmm. uh, Blu-rays of <laughs> nice. Alligator People. <laughs> Very good. And The Vengeance of Sheen. That's right. Nice. Which you can still purchase, God. by the way. I, yeah. how, I can't stop loving you. That's the problem. <laughs> but anyway, so Pat, Kathy, and I, we, we went to see it. We went to see it at the El Capitan, which is the Disney theater. Oh, cool. Nice. And what was really neat is they had Stormtrooper guys walking around. Oh, nice. Fun. They had a little yeah. laser show. And so I'm already in a good Hopefully mood. Hopefully not real ones. <laughs> I don't know. I got this little red dot floating around my eye right now. But that's, uh, that's so, so it put me in a good mood. And I go, I don't know how this is going to go. Because I actually expected to see some kind of floating thing, sure. you know, Sean. Right, and, right. and no, from the very beginning, I really got into it. The thing that I, was, that I loved about it was I thought it was beautiful. It was gorgeous. There's a sequence that takes, t- takes place... And then, like an ocean area, yeah. love that. And it was it to me. I thought that was stunning. Yeah. That was beautiful. Yeah. And and see, that's the thing. Comes back to what Matt the says. Force thing. But like, even though it's familiar, I got to be honest because I still have that 
incredibly strong nostalgic pull from the first film when I saw it at that moment in my life. I just like being in the Star Wars universe. And when they fuck it up, like in Last Jedi, I get pissed off. Yeah. Mm -hmm. now, but which they, one? What do you mean? Which mm -hmm. Star Wars Well, universe? but see, I thought Force Awakens brought me back to that where I felt, oh my God, this is actually Star Wars again. None of the prequels did that for me. Mm -hmm. I feel nothing for any of yeah, those. No. Yes. But Force Awakens was like, oh my gosh, they brought this back to Star Wars. Then they screwed it up with Jedi. So yeah. Uh, last Jedi. So that's when I saw Skywalker. I'm like, okay, this is back to like. It's just I just like living the world. and I like the characters. I gotta be honest. And even like, the little lampshade guy. I, oh the yeah, lampshade guy. He didn't bother me. We we we, me. we have that little toy already. <laughs> <laughs> okay, it's, it's Star Wars. I mean, you're, you either like it or you don't. Like, how many fucking tiny, cute, rolling <laughs> robots do I have to uh, be subjected uh, never, to? Never, never enough. To me, as far <laughs> oh, as I'm God. concerned. Yeah. All right. Uh, that's why I liked Rogue One. I'd put that one in number three for I, me. I, I like because I think Rogue, yeah. number Rogue, four for me. And I have problems with that movie, but uh, it is doing that something different. That android, yes, it's yeah, doing, it's something, doing different, something different. Yeah. And the android's hilarious. Yeah, android's cool and yep. cool looking. Yeah, and although not cute. If if Mandalorian were a long film instead of a series, I'd probably put that one. Wait a minute before we get to that. Uh huh. Larry, do you have anything else you'd like to contribute? In conclusion. In conclusion. Of Rise of Skywalker. Because I, I love you deeply, um, madly and passionately, and I want you to finish your thought. No, I guess I, I finished. Uh, I'd like like you, and James. I mean, I enjoyed it. Oh, my, oh, what I wanted to tell you is, so my kid really enjoyed it. And okay. she really liked how they. She they likes Stranger told. Things. Anyway. Yeah, um. yeah, yeah. <laughs> which, which is fun, too. You we'll know? get to that, too. Uh, but we both enjoyed it. We both had a lot of fun. I really like how it ended. I love the I, last shot. And it's yeah. and what's funny yeah. is, with the first three films, Return of the Jedi wasn't totally satisfied with. No. Out of these last three, I really like how this one ended up. Yeah, you know, yeah. Um, I, yeah, I almost like it better than the the first two. What? For, no, no, the first the, the the two that just oh, happened. Oh, yeah, yeah, okay, yeah, okay, 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 yeah, yeah, okay. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I agree. Okay, I got two things that yeah, you know, like sometimes you're watching something, you go, "This would be a great moment." One moment was there's that scene where you see the ghost versions of Luke and Leia, and they're floating around. Wouldn't it have been great to see everybody? Yeah, I thought that too. I think uh, yeah. that would have been. That was kind of a like, missed opportunity. Even even Hayden Christensen. Everybody, yeah. 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 everybody, yeah. that would have been yeah. a neat, nice, I think everybody, uh, I think, yeah. and That's that would have cool. been easy enough to do. Now, I guess there's something probably about paying everybody for their image. Well, I don't but know. But this is Disney owns question. them. Yeah, yeah, money would be a question. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I'm, I'm not going to disagree with you there. That would have been Well, neat. I got another one too. Okay. The whole Finn thing. Finn has something he wants to say, mm -hmm. and he's waiting the entire time to say it to Ray, and that never happened. We never got to go to that place, and it would have been great to finally get to that moment, and he's about to say, I just <laughs> want to say, and she says, I know. Yeah, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah let's go. You, know, you like that? Yeah, yeah it's okay. <laughs> it's okay. Yeah. Although, although the line I know was relegated to to its proper character, in, in the that's true. Yeah. But that could have been a nice little yeah. homage. Yeah. To, yeah, if yeah, we're yeah. we're going to have you know everything else, and, and everybody as, else show up in this movie. And as to the the idea about the ghosts, I I would kind of argue that they covered it not as in a novel way, but they covered it when she was hearing all the past Jedi voices, yes. including Samuel L. Jackson, I and like Yoda, that. Yeah. and Obi Wan. And I think you hear uh, even um, I what's just, his face from as uh, a the visual. Too. Yeah, it was underwhelming to just see. You know, the little ghost in the middle there. And, no, okay. <laughs> you what, you what wanted Cy Snoodles there, didn't you? I, want, I, wanted every, I wanted everyone from every... Like, I wanted to look like a Where's Waldo. <laughs> you wanted Jabba you, the Hutt in you there. Wanted, you wanted uh, you Art wanted... Carney there. I do. <laughs> yeah. 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 Arthur, yeah. 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 Harvey oh. Corman. Oh. And there was a reference, which I did like. I did like that. There wasn't, wasn't there a reference to uh, the holiday, holiday special? special? Didn't no, somebody you're, say? you're thinking of The Mandalorian. Oh, that's right. Yes, <laughs> yeah, that's yeah. right. Yeah. I did like what I also like, which some of the other story films always annoy me. They did a little flashback with two characters. Right. And they briefly show them younger, but that worked. Yeah. They don't show it long. They show them with helmets on, like... Don't yeah. fucking dwell on it. It's like right. yeah, that worked. Yeah. I was impressed with how they used all that Force Awakens footage of Leia. Yeah. 
Yes, yes they did. Was. A, that was that was that, pretty good. That was yeah. actually tastefully and nicely done. Yeah. Like that was good. Yeah. yeah. I actually want to see it again. I want I want yeah. to go see it again. All right. All right. So there's one. Yes. Okay. okay. <laughs> right. Well, we let's just keep going <laughs> Star Wars. Yeah, Mandalorian. Yes. Yes. Mandalorian. 8 episodes, Disney Plus. Half hour, usually like half hour, forty minute episodes. Yeah, written, um, written by John Favreau. Yeah, he directed a lot of them too. Mm-hmm. I'm a big fan. Yeah, me too. I, I enjoy him. Pedro Pascal plays the Mandalorian. Mm-hmm. I think he's great. He's great, and right. one of the most iconic new old <laughs> Star Wars characters. Yes. Well, species. It's right. Not, right. It's not but the but it's character. funny. I know, but it's funny that it's been given this name. I know. I know. Well, of, well, and you know what I'm talking about. Oh, I know about. what you're talking yeah. about. Because Baby Yoda. Baby, Baby, Yoda. Baby Yoda. Everybody, every, it's, it's Baby Yoda, Yoda is, is yeah. has taken the internet by <laughs> know, storm. And rightfully and, so. Yeah. Yes, and you know, I'm not normally wooed by cute <laughs> characters. Yeah. But you can't oh my God. not so, fall in love. The design of it, and I think I read somewhere that they were going to do it CGI, but they kept it all physical. Mm. Puppetry so, so great. Good. Yeah. Really um, good. A lot so of great. puppetry in that. Yeah. And makeup and... Well, the, first of all, technically, I've heard that they like spend like twenty million dollars per episode. It looks fantastic. But what makes the show to me, like, you know, the original Star Wars was it's a western. It's you know Flash Gordon, and the Mandalorian. Talk about you know living in the Star Wars universe. You take one little facet of the universe, one little handful of characters, and follow those characters to follow like a s- relatively simple linear story, mm-hmm. and. It works well as a TV series in that way. Absolutely. That's the thing. And coming into it being pretty burnt out when it came to Star Wars, I watched the first episode and I wasn't sure because it was so much a Western. Yeah. A lot of Western cliches. Samurai, baby cards. Sure, all of those things at play. Right. And I wasn't sure if I liked it because I wasn't sure if this is this just ripping something blatantly off or is it an homage or how are they handling this? Right. And- what you get out of it is the characters. The characters, yeah. even though you've got this Western samurai backdrop, they use it well. And by going back to the basics mm-hmm. and maybe being a little simpler yeah, in right. its approach, it just works so much there's better. Not, there's so not much so much of responsibility stuff. on their shoulders to like, oh, we got to tell this like, giant yeah, right. saga. That's, that's why I think it's hard with the movies. You yeah. Know? It's like, yeah. yeah. It also proves that you can do it in that short form medium, a television series without necessarily a lot of the same tropes or expectations you have, like the symphonic score. It doesn't really I have I love that. the score. The score is great. But, great. but understated score. Understated. Yeah, so yes. you can actually have a successful Star Wars show that doesn't have the John Williams themes, right right you know. you're right it's a, kind of the first time you're yeah I think Rogue One did that a little bit too yeah a little but, bit, but, but, it, but yeah, no you're like the fact that yeah there's a Star Wars TV series and it's good yeah you know like, I loved it I, and, and there's there's one episode that I can say I hated <laughs> okay. and the rest of them uh, oh, are really great. There's the, a Seven yeah, Samurai, Samurai one Samurai, right. that's just egregiously it's, bad. It's basically the Samurai, Seven Samurai plot, you mm-hmm. know, with a, the Mandalorian. With, with like almost no changes. Mm-hmm. Like it's really right. by I, the I book. Though, you understand yeah. too, uh, Sean, when you said uh, it must be spending like $20 million per episode, understand it's, I don't think they're looking at this like we're spending twenty million oh, on no, whatever. I, I mean, I'm just saying it looks to, so to good. preserve to preserve sure. the legacy the, the, of Star Wars, the Star Wars universe. Right. The property it, is so valuable. Yeah, yeah and yeah. and I think this Mandalorian was a smart move. You first of all, they had the right people. I think in right. charge, Favreau's right person. I think he's yeah. terrific. Yeah. 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 And even the credits, the end credits, Those where they paintings? everything looks yeah. like uh, a Macquarie the, yeah. concept music, art. Um, Werner Herzog. Yeah. Werner Herzog, the director, <laughs> uh, is in the movie as a bad guy, and he's great. He's great. Uh, he's scary. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. No, Carl Weathers is fantastic. Right. Like, I mean, Nick, Nick, Nick Nolte. Nolte. Yeah. It's like, yeah. voice it's like of all, one of, yeah. all these people who, you know, became big in the 70s. And yeah. Now they show up in the Maybe that's what it is, too. Like, there's something tapping into, like, our generation, kind of. I mean, I know that, you know, it's been picked up for another season, and it is it is like a story where it's a, by chapters. You're Like you said, it almost plays like a big, long movie. Yeah. And they do kind of leave it hanging. It's a kind of show where, like, wow, it's over already. Mm, you know, yeah, it's like, it's fast. like, it's, yeah. Correct me if I'm wrong, but are they all different lengths? To well, they're a, a little bit like, 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 yeah, they're not exact, but nothing's, I think none of them are even an hour, though. The pilot's a little longer than the other episodes. Yeah. Mo- okay. Most of them are like 35 minutes. Ago. Yeah. Yeah. And Larry, you have not seen this yet? Mm-mm. Okay. But you, uh, enjoy you will it. enjoy this. Yeah. I really do think that this is something yeah. that you're going to like. I mean, I know there's like, a very funny stormtrooper moment <laughs> that I think you'll yes. you'll get a laugh out yeah. of. Yeah, uh, yeah. No, it's it's good. I was just very happy. I mean, 
even just like what they smartly did with the Marvel Cinematic Universe, you have all these superhero characters, but you can make different kinds of films with each one. You can make right. a caper film. You can make a Three Days of the Condor type film mm-hmm. all within the universe. And I think you can do things a little bit like that with Star Wars. You can like yeah, explore... Not? But see, I don't, I don't know. I don't feel like the MCU has done. I think what they've done is they've done a very good job of making cinematic versions of the comic books or comic book storylines. Like the Thanos storyline is something directly from the comics, right? Whereas, mm-hmm. like for example, can we go on to another Star Wars thing? Sure. Yeah. Solo. Yeah, okay. that's in my worst. Although that was 2018, I think. Yeah, but that was. Was it? I thought it was 2019. No. Uh, no. It's, All right, it's 2018. But I was thinking about it going into Mandalorian. Mm -hmm. And it's one of those movies, you know, Sean, you were talking about the whole caper thing. That's a caper movie. Yeah. And it's trying to be a little film noir in its storyline because there's the girlfriend who's now working for the bad guy and and she's a femme fatale. And there's a, a lot of familiar moments from other movies. And that was one that really didn't work for me. Like I thought solo solo. You know, it didn't work for me because Harrison Ford is so identified with that character and I want to be open-minded and I wanted to be going in, but I just couldn't see him as Han Solo be- and not anything I didn't him. mind the cast. Actually. He was, he was yeah, fine. I thought he was good, actually. Yeah, I thought everybody was doing the best job they possibly could. I, I don't fault the cast. I was just not broad-minded enough to accept him in the role. That's it. Mm. I just thought it was, once again, it was just kind of, everything was pretty surface and even when it wasn't surface, it was not surprising in any way. It was very much by the numbers, Mm -hmm. this kind of story. Mm -hmm. And I have to say, I did definitely enjoy The Rise of Skywalker much more than Solo. Okay, good. Yeah, okay. Yeah. Yeah, Yeah, it'd be interesting to see what they do now with... uh, Slice Noodles? The movie? Yeah, (laughs) the the spin-off film. But are they going to do, are they planning to do another trilogy? Well, it's funny. Theatrical trilogy? Does anyone know? Do you guys know? You know, it's funny you should say that. I think Solo hurt the franchise. But I think there so did things, Last Jedi critically. No, but but it's like everything was in motion. The Mandalorian was still being planned. Right, the right. Other, there were other plans for these other offshoots. Yeah. Maybe Sice Noodles Adventures <laughs> was one of them. I don't know. But they are, they are but doing so, a Obi Wan series though. Well, with uh, what's his face? How, how about a Sice Ian Noodles? Sice Noodles. Ian McGregor. Ian McGregor, yeah. really? yeah, Ian McGregor yeah. is, wow, really? is playing wow. Obi Wan in a in a Disney Plus. TV series, I think. That's, That's cool. what I heard. Could be good. Yeah, yeah. I, I, I would watch that. He's yeah. he's hit and miss for me. I think I, I actually I liked him though as Obi Wan though. Sure. I mean those yeah. movies are pretty horrible. Keep, but I keep liked Liam Neeson away. You, know? <laughs> yeah. you don't like Liam? not in not in no. the Star yeah. Wars movies. Yeah, it's kind of yeah. dull. Right? But in yeah. in, in, kinda, fair, in fairness, flat. in fairness, it, maybe it's not all his fault. It was like George's uh, yeah. script, yeah. Yeah. his yeah. directing, his. I mean, I hard to just act. To it, green every yeah. day, <laughs> and, and, or a guy wearing a giant rubber goofy mask, <laughs> right? That's yeah, yeah. A, you With know, some ping Jar pong Jar balls Binks. on it. Yeah, how ridiculous yeah. is that? Yeah, yeah. So I don't know. I would love to see a Cy Snoodles concert film. Yeah, <laughs> you know, done like the Last Waltz. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> well, you know, there's a big fan base for Admiral Akbar. You know, <laughs> it's a track. is there? Yeah, I love and, him. and he also, died, though, right? and also, Nia Num. Remember him? Oh, God, yeah. yeah, the what, guy who's with uh, uh, Lando Calrissian. Lando Calrissian. Oh, no, no. What's, 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 people like him. How's it pronounced? Ne- Nian Num. I thought it was like Nub Nub. No, <laughs> no, no. That's the that's, <laughs> that's the, the, the no, Ewoks going that, Nub that's, Nub. That's, that's what you we Nub Nub. Nub Nub is what you say to your budgie. No, that's a song. Nub Nub. Okay. Dummy. Okay, I don't know. You guys, oh yeah, you're Mister Star Wars. Yeah. Okay. Wow, you sound like Yoda right there. Mister Star Wars, you are. You are not. <laughs> okay, well, look, there are more things than Star Wars That's true. in 2009. Yes. That's true. What's some other movies? Hey, we brought up the MCU. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Well, yeah. That's, and that's the, the big, big elephant in the room. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Endgame. I, I enjoyed Endgame a lot. I think they, A lot. Yeah. Well, yeah. Okay. Yeah. Isn't it you called Avengers Endgame? Avengers Endgame. Can we yeah. call it by its correct title? Mm hmm. Avengers Endgame. Yeah. Directed by <laughs> yeah. Anthony Russo and Joe Russo. Right. To oh, yeah, um, they guys they run the whole franchise. I mean, yeah. but these guys, I think, are just brilliant. It's interesting though, that, like you know how like the latest controversy, I think Scorsese <laughs> came out. <laughs> oh know? yeah, well, so and, that like, pissed the, me off. And, and, yeah, no, like, these aren't real. Like, no, basically, for listeners, said, yeah, for listeners who don't know, Scorsese made some kind of comment about 
criticizing all the MCU films, saying like they're not real movies. I couldn't movies. make these because these aren't real movies. Not yeah, real they're cinema. not real movies. They're like thrill rides. Like, what? Like, <laughs> Yeah, I, I mean, would love to see that fucker try to make an MCU movie and make yeah, it work. Right. Yeah. It's just so they, arrogant. And that's the yeah. thing. And when I say fucker, I say it lovingly. <laughs> yes. Because I do love Scorsese. I mean, of course. Look, with yeah. all due respect. King, King of, with all due respect. Absolutely. King of Comedy is probably in my top five favorite films of Ra- all Raging, time. Wow. Raging Bull I fucking love favorite. that movie. Goodfellas. Good Goodfellas. Good, good, good I mean, oh, you can watch... Yes. If it's on, I yeah. will yeah, watch yeah, it. Yes. Like, I feel like I'm not like that about Raging Bull. But, but I, lo- I yeah. love Raging Bull. But I Bull. didn't understand how, how could such a great, great filmmaker, he's an amazing filmmaker, make such a crack about, about this amazing movie. I think what he did is he, he got a little film school on us and he just put his foot in his mouth. And I think, I really do think that later he thought about it and went, ooh, maybe I shouldn't yeah. have said that. Some people think, oh, it's just this roller coaster. Ride. There's a lot of heartfelt emotion yeah, in this. It's no Shutter Island. All, all the actors, <laughs> oh, in, all the actors in you, this movie I mean? are, are just fantastic. And there's, what? No, go ahead. no it's funny because I saw Shutter Island. I got to tell you. I saw the trailer for Shutter Island before I saw the movie, yeah. and I figured out what was going on already. Of course you did. It's, it's like it's so obvious. It's so over the top it's too. So, every, every shot and it's scene is overdone. so like. But like mean, I knew exactly what was up. No, but I and mean, so that's what I'm saying. It's like mm-hmm. and Gangs in New York too is another one where it's just Ugh. like, oh man, I, I, I got to like, even get through that. And, Look, okay, yeah. and and that's I haven't great, seen but, The Irishman yet. Yeah, but Gangs no. of New York was not 2019, and we're no, just that's making true. we're yeah. just making no, a comment like, about a very capable, talented a filmmaker you, we, made these comments. And we it all surpri- love him. It surprised me because yes, it did me too. Avengers Endgame is a fabulous well, movie. I, I will say this. I will say this. I made the mistake of seeing the last two Avengers movies not on the big screen. And I was a little bit distracted and it was kind of easy to get lost. And there was a lot of shit going on. Well, there, and if, yeah, you're, and you're, if you're, you're not immediately engaged like in a theater, yes, I agree. You, you can get lost. And, sure. I got, and I got lost. I was not as engaged as I wanted to be. So I have to revisit them because in my own way, I can sort of understand what Scorsese is saying. It's like, holy shit, this is just like a lot of CGI going on, a lot of characters. And I'm just, I'm not as invested because at some point, I wasn't following enough. You right. know what's right. funny? He didn't make. That? He didn't pick out a specific movie, though. No, he just said. Yeah, I yeah. think he said all. He made a blanket movies. statement. I, yeah, I guess so. But in Endgame, you you know, you made a comment about the last Star Wars. You had you know tears streaming down your eyes. Yeah, there were a couple moments in Endgame where I had <laughs> dried those, him off those with his dress. <laughs> <laughs> so you're not alone, Larry. Fame, I, those same strong emotions. Yeah. And and I don't care what anyone says. I I did not know where it was going to go. I had heard people speculate. Well, I, they should do this or they just. I had no idea where the film was going to go. And and, I, and, yeah, and, 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 and yeah. some of the sacrifices that were made in this film, some of the things that happened in this film, it was just heart wrenching, and it really really affected me. And I thought yeah. it was beautifully done. Mm-hmm. It, and it was a very very emotional film. And I I mean at the end I was drained. Mm-hmm. And you said talk about like the. F- the Star Wars franchise, how and you, I think somebody said this before in the show, where you know, look at the track record of how many Star Wars films there are and how many are actually g- really good. Really, that good. was me, right? Yeah, but look at the MCU and how many movies there are, how many work, how, how, how many work, and just, just the franchise itself that undertaking what they pulled off. I know I've said that before, but like for a fantasy, sci fi, horror genre franchise to do that so successfully is amazing. And when we're talking about the Avengers and we were just discussing how many characters there are and how this is a really big story. It's a universe shattering story <clears throat> and you've got all these smaller stories in it. And so the film prior to Endgame, Infinity Wars, mm-hmm. right? that was one that I was a little meh about <laughs> because... Going into it or um, seeing it? Seeing it. Really? And I did like it. I did like oh it. Oh my god! I did like it, but I thought it was a little too fast and loose with the comedy, a little and, bit it, by and I what? thought I thought it took away from the drama of the situation. <clears throat> now, when we got to the drama and we got to all the Tony Stark stuff, I thought that was wonderful. Like right. I love that. I wanted more of that. I don't. Right. We don't need to crack wise every other scene. Right. But with Endgame, I thought they did a good job in just initially establishing this. You know, sober environment because it's a really right. Serious they started thing off really, yeah. Right. Oh, it was, <clears throat> like with yes. Thor and yeah, oh my Loki. Gosh. Yeah, 
All of that I really enjoyed. Mm -hmm. And so I would say it's still overall because of just how many things they had to deal with. It's still not my favorite Avengers film or my favorite Marvel Universe film, but I did like it. And I was impressed with how they were able to wrap this thing up so neatly. Yes. And without having it be too muddy and too convoluted. And also it was able to pack an emotional impact. Right. Yeah. Yeah, it's, it's it's amazing feat. I mean, I don't know where they're gonna go with it. Like, I know there's they're gonna there'll be another phase of films, and like I said, they don't always do it. Like Captain Marvel, I thought was kind of a throwaway film. Oh, I, hated, hated I that loved movie. it. It's I on my I, list. I, I didn't them. hate it. I just I thought it wasn't it. necessary. Loved, Boring, lo- but, um, exciting, I fun, want, I, sexy. I, I, <laughs> <laughs> I wanted the. There's part of it that I liked. There's a third of it that I enjoyed, and that was the. Nick Fury stuff. Oh, well, there's oh, yeah, three thirds yeah. of it that I liked. So, <laughs> okay, I, well, there you go. Right. We but can, I thought we, the, yeah. it's not a personal affront to you. It didn't work it's for not. me. <laughs> but, they, but I think so they, any wait, con- contrary thing. No, wait, what's happened to you? <laughs> oh, like, so you want me to be a dick? It's 2020. <laughs> Come on. Come on. I was new just you? in your face about every other movie. <laughs> But like the last Spider-Man film, I was really disappointed. It's like, what, I haven't why even seen that bother yet. with that? But the, there's a, the trailer. Is it worth even watching? No, no. For you, probably not. Okay. <laughs> I mean, but yet the trailer for the new Black Widow film looks kind of cool. Yeah, it looks Be- really because, cool. Because, I love that character. Because it looks like a gritty, earth-based, 70s, like, spotty. Yeah. So I hope they do that. I hope they keep it, like, grounded. James, you're yeah. not the biggest Scarlett Scar- Johansson. Oh, that's no, right. You don't I, <gasps> And I'm a little I'm a little on the fence. Sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. Really? There's a lot of scenes with her in certain, especially in some of the Marvel movies, where it's like, oh, I can see a little acting here. I, I can I, see I, someone I, she's just not, saying she's, lines. She's not credible to me as an actor. Really? Really. She's totally she's credible to me. Limited, to me. Yeah. Yeah. I'm, Limit, I'm limited. Oh, oh, I no, see. No, I think that she she can be good. <laughs> like you know, This year, uh, Marriage Story, uh, look, she's she's good. Okay. It, she's, she's a good JoJo actress. Rabbit. It. Jojo, uh, yeah. You didn't like well, it. Oh, you didn't like that. I haven't, I haven't, I haven't seen, seen that seen yet. yet so. so don't tell me. I haven't seen the the last hour and a half of it. I I got I got <laughs> what I got. So you got oh, through the well, credits. You yeah. like, walked out. I got, <laughs> terrible. Look, 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 look. Maybe it's just not for me, or maybe I didn't stick around long enough to get it. Well, but, that's, you don't but, like Nazi humor. Well, I like Nazi humor, but I don't. <laughs> Thank I, God. I don't like over the top silly Nazi humor which I'm supposed to somehow find clever which is just stupid I mean that see, was, yeah, see, no. that's why I could not get through Wes mm. Anderson some of those films I like the animated ones but some of the <laughs> it was the hotel whatever that he did oh, yes, yeah. yes 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 and uh, see that. when it gets to be like too like Can hey I, we're all yeah, crazy yeah, eccentrics that's, that's not like that. this film but that's a is that a Jojo Rabbit's 2019. Yeah, yeah, yeah. we were 2019. talking about Black Widow and Scarlett Johansson. And but Matt, she, Matt. I think she's wonderful in the film. But okay, so you guys are not a fan. But are you saying? I, are I, you I, saying, not, sir? Not, I just think that sometimes it, she doesn't. She's obviously lovely, and sometimes yes, she, she is. <laughs> yes, but she. <laughs> and we, and we, finally, we agree on something. <laughs> but I think that when it comes to her acting, sometimes it's less authentic than at other times. See, I, I all I, okay, because you go to like your Academy Award winning, you know, acting school or something, and what? I mean, what? she's, you know, <laughs> yeah. she is. Let's look at I, all my I, Academy I, Awards. <laughs> I, I see nothing but action see, the funny figures. Thing is, from the very beginning, when when I first saw her in the film, I loved her. I loved her character. I liked her. I liked her the first character. character. To me, she was consistent through the whole thing. See, judging by the trailer, what makes Black Widow work is the supporting characters, the Russians. It seemed to me it might be funny and engaging yeah, the, her, uh, her. The, her sister's in it she's played by the Midsommar chick oh okay oh, that's yeah, cool yeah, that's yeah. cool speaking of which speaking, speaking of which, which okay can I, just, that. can I just say one thing uh, yeah go ahead that we were going to mention defend about your girlfriend the best and worst <laughs> no best and worst uh, of 2019 mm-hmm. this film that Sean just mentioned I saw this film Midsommar mm-hmm. and I only need to see it once <laughs> First of all, <laughs> it is a really good film. It is, yeah. yeah. But it is so all agree. disturbing. Yeah. Yeah. It is such a disturbing film. And the funny thing is, Matt has said something to me about it's similar to another film, which I agree with him on. Shades of. Shades yeah. of. But it was still so powerful. Yeah. Because and in a way- unique. Unique in its horror. Yes. Unique in its horror, yes. One of the things I really like about it is that, and that makes it stand out from the pack- 
day horror. Oh yeah, yeah. the whole thing is pretty much. And, yeah. and and look, I want to I want to go out on a limb here and say, you know, this film I don't think it's for everybody. No. I, I don't think no. it's. I don't no, think no, it's no. Hey, right. go out and see. It's good. It's a good date movie. First date oh, movie. Oh, oh, oh. <laughs> I mean, uh, uh, the director Ari written Aster, Aster, Ari Aster, Aster. and uh, who it, did uh, Hereditary, which is, which is a work of genius. <clears throat> but it's it basically follows a, a group of friends that travel to Sweden. There, there's this friend that's Sweden that goes. Oh, I'm going to go back home to my. You know, this commune that I was raised on, and we have this festival. It happens once every 90 years. And this years. woman has suffered this horrible tragedy. Horrible. Oh, I mean, yeah. horrible tragedy. And she's with a boyfriend, and the boyfriend, like, right before all this stuff happens, he's, he's like, on the way out. Well, he's yeah, he's yeah, got he his gets, foot out the door. He, he feels that, you know, she's got, she's got a, a lot, lot of baggage. baggage. She's got and, a lot of baggage. And, and now baggage. she has even more. And the yeah. funny, the weird thing about this is when you see, when you see them kind of go through it, I think you can understand from the guy's point of view is like, oh man, am I am I really? You know, it seems like she's got a lot going on. I don't remember how long they had been dating, but especially if it's kind of early in the dating thing, and you know, it was they had been a while. It was a couple years, years, or yeah, yeah. yeah. And it's and it's and and so I can understand where this guy was coming from. I think a lot of I think. I will say a lot of men can identify. You know, <laughs> <laughs> you know it's like yeah, uh, oh, you know, man. Yeah. Well, man, just because a couple people die in your life, <laughs> wah 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 wah. <laughs> but yeah, it's a uh, it's it's heavy. It's, it's super. It's a very heavy, heavy. Like like you worry about the actors in the film. Like, yes, like, you do. Like, wow, are they all gonna be okay after so this. So imagine, so imagine if you will. So mm-hmm. this this young woman has had some tragedy in her life, and oh my gosh, she's so upset and stuff. But this boyfriend of hers and his friends, they're gonna go to Sweden to check out this thing. Hey, do you, do you want to come along? They invite her, but they kind of kind of think maybe she doesn't <laughs> yeah. want to, and and she thinks maybe this is the thing. Maybe it'd be to a do. good thing. And and okay, all right, and and well, then it's also you know these young Americans, these students are in this environment, and it, it's amazing. I actually saw the film a second time, and it was even more amazing how much they allow to happen without trying to run away from this place. But the other thing is... But it works in the story because it, they're, they're, they're doing window. like a research... Yeah, yeah, see, yeah. that's the thing, research selfish, paper. Don't you agree? Yes, motivated. they're, they're self-involved with each other. Yeah, don't yeah. you yeah. agree that it's some uh, many horror films that we see, it's sometimes like, you're so stupid. Why would you open the door? Why are you going in that room? And, right. These are smart adults. Yeah, and they know? do try... To get away, yeah, yeah, and yes. right. certain right. people there's try to get away, yeah. and, and also and you've got questions but, certain things. Yeah, that but happen. they're stuck in the middle of this a fucking community. Nowhere. And <laughs> yeah. at first, it seems like oh, everyone's so nice and everything's so beautiful, and there's lovely artwork in these wonderful buildings, and the tea it, is so delicious. Yeah, everything <laughs> just seems so nice, <laughs> and the and quilts that they make. Don't are get me so, started on that tea. The, the quilts are so amazing, and you can't and replicate that when, and have when, it work. And then when you see the needlework, it's like oh, that's amazing. That, oh, oh, what is that's that? A little, whoa! <laughs> yeah. What is it's, it's, it's the way you like? Yeah, the little, the little things that and it builds up and it's yeah. like and like it's just the uneasy. That's what it is. The an uneasiness. Yeah, well, so his, well done. His technique and it, it was the same technique as Hereditary, it, it, pretty yes, much. Yes. He's got this almost Stanley Kubrick le- like it's very slow and methodical. Yeah, you're right. And the it's, music is very creepy, detachment, and cold, yes. cold, yeah. very yeah, cold, cold, very detached. I'd, I'd love for him to adapt the King novel. That would be yeah. that would be amazing. Yeah, yeah. And I look forward to whatever he's going to. Cinematography is always just incredible. Yeah. It, no, it's, it is a, it's a beautiful film to look at. It really and, is. And there's it's, a lot of detail that I just read a BuzzFeed like clickbait piece on all the subliminal imagery in it. Oh and yeah. The, and there's a lot. Even the very first image that opens the film is like a, a tapestry of painting. Yeah. Yes. And yeah. It actually, if you look at it closely, tells the story. Really. From left to right. Oh man. And stuff like that. That's so I cool. Mean, yeah. I just know I'm never going to Sweden. <laughs> for sure he's uh I, I, ari aster though man that's a guy to watch yeah, yeah, I, yeah i will i will say this i mean i thought the film was disturbing like you said beautiful and it was well done i understand that some people have it on their worst list really? they were yeah no, yeah it's not and, for everyone I mean, no yeah, and again all... the only thing i could say to that is it's not everyone's cup of tea no. yes and, and again you james saw it twice you know honestly i don't need to see it a second time um, I might see it again. I might I, see, I it again. see it again. I think I, sure. I, I, fact, I think I want to own it. I'd like to own it because I, I like to see. <laughs> you wanted to watch the scene over no, and over. No, I want to see the making. I want to see the making of and yes. like any like stuff. Like, yeah. yeah, I kind of want to know about. Now, it. Did just you, a lot of footage. Did you see Hereditary? Yeah. No, no. But you know, it's funny. What? You just, you just brought. Well, you, can I talk? You just said something <laughs> really interesting. 
to, to see the behind the scenes. Can yeah. you imagine yeah. this director talking to these groups? There are these long shots where you have all of these, you know, they're yeah, actors, yeah. but they're doing this thing like this group and they're all going through these emotional moments oh and God, you're like, I know. oh so, my God. I, I mean, it, it's, it's amazing. Yeah. Well, Ari Aster for Hereditary, the original idea, I guess he was playing with the idea of doing the story about, it's a family drama. And one of my pet peeves is when someone tries to put their indie drama, you know, dress it up and make it into a horror movie. Mm -hmm. And I think what he does is he's able to do that in a way where what he understands is that if we're talking about a family tragedy, you can hang that on a supernatural concept so easily mm -hmm. because it just doubles the horror. Right, yeah. right. And he, he, he puts his characters through the ringers yeah. uh, in his films. Yeah. And the actors, too. The, so the guy who played the son in Hereditary, apparently, like was this heavy-duty method guy and got so into it that <laughs> I think he had to go to therapy afterwards. Wow, yeah. wow. That's but, a, you know that's a sign of a good horror film. Yeah. The actors have to go to therapy afterwards. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that's, that's a good one. Absolutely. Okay. Any, any worst? Well, there's a couple that I haven't seen, but okay, that, um, you can't I, do I, that. No, no, but I mean, just the trends, trends. Okay. Um, like another Pet Cemetery, another Hellboy, another Men in Black, another Child's Play, revamping, re. Yeah. But were re any of them good? No, it's and true, I, I'm it's assuming true. they're not. You yeah, know what? But, you know what bugs me, and this isn't really fair. I remember that there was this whole campaign that went on for a while to try to do a Hellboy three. I wanted to see when Hellboy 2 ended right, right. with Ron Perlman. Mm -hmm. It ends on this note that, oh my God, I can't wait for the third one. I really did. I really felt that way. I thought it was coming, and I waited and I waited, and either the film, the second film, either didn't do as well as they had hoped or it whatnot. Didn't. And it's right, a sh right. it's a shame because I like that movie. Yeah, I, I think I mean, it gets a bad rap. Which I one? Think Hellboy the second two. one. Yeah, Hellboy yeah, two. Yeah, I like that one too. I think Actually, it, I, think, I like both. I still like the original the best. I, the best I, one. I, I like but, both. But I, I think Doug Jones is amazing in that. <clears throat> yeah, yeah. I, it's I a mean, bigger film. It's yeah. a more. I think elaborate. everyone is. I think everyone is great in it. And but I just wanted that so much. And so then we wait and wait, wait. It doesn't happen. Then it's like, hey, let's reboot Hellboy. Yeah. And and it's not really fair to that guy who played Hellboy, but just recently. It was on television and I watched a five minute clip mm -hmm. and the makeup and the performance, everything about Hellboy that I had known and loved, it just wasn't there. It just didn't seem... Mm -hmm. Wasn't it the kind of thing where they had to make another movie to keep the rights to it or something? Was Probably. that part of that? It sounds like... Oh, it. What really... I didn't see the movie, but from all the you know bad reviews that I heard and read, I didn't really want to see it. And it's directed by Neil Marshall, who did The Descent. Yeah. Mm. Oh, that's right. And so yeah. that's sad to me. And yeah. and you know, and who knows what the situation is and we're all trying to get work and you know, it's yeah. a job. Sure. And, I mean, if it's a trend, that's one thing in a filmmaker. But yeah, I was with you. I really wanted to see that third installment of the Del Toro series. Yeah. 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 It's a shame. I've got a worst one. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. How about the movie Brightburn? James Gunn. That's one I'm curious to see, and I, that, that movie came and went so fast. And yeah, yeah, and I like uh, the con the concept. Sound interesting to me, which is basically like the Superman origin story. Yeah, it's uh, it stars Elizabeth Banks and David Denman. It's the Superman story as if done like a horror movie, mm -hmm. and that concept right off the bat, I was like, this yeah, got to be cool. great. Yeah, right. This sounds like it's going to be so good. And then Chris Mancini saw it and he was saying how much he disliked it. I was like, oh. And we rented it. Mm -hmm. Right. And it's just so bad. And it's one of those things, too, where you, as you're watching it, you go, like, all the pieces are here, but it just doesn't work. Mm -hmm. And it seems like there's a lot of just scenes connected to tell the story, but there's not like this emotional through line that mm -hmm. you buy into. Is it kind of forced with all the horror it's forced, stuff a bit? It's, yeah, it's forced. And if you're going to see it, I don't want to give it all away, but there are moments that are cool. Mm -hmm. I mean, I wouldn't say it's the worst piece of shit I've ever seen, but mm -hmm. it's a complete disappointment. Mm -hmm. Something um. that could have been so great. <sighs> And I have, when we talk about bests, I have a best that's kind of like the version of this thing that does work. Okay. So none of you have seen Brightburn? No, nope. no it's, on my it's on our list to see. Um, one I saw that was, I, I wouldn't say it was a huge disappointment, but it was like, eh, 
Ad Astra. Oh yeah. Oh, oh yeah. Do you see that? Anybody no, see I haven't that? seen it. No. It's like it's basically it's Apocalypse Now in space. Huh. It's Brad Pitt going off into the solar system to find instead of finding uh, uh, <laughs> Marlon Brando. Marlon Brando is to find his father, played by Tommy Lee Jones. It's lots of like pondering the universe and lots of like inner voice narration by oh Brad no Pitt. yeah no, <laughs> wait, wait, wait. I, I ponder the universe <laughs> but out loud <laughs> but, but, but I mean he's like it's like you're you're in his mi- mind he's like what's thinking about what's, what's made by dad if it's a long drive and, you know you just know. talk out loud and it's, it's a, good it's a, it's a very it's, it's a very you've seen it you've seen Ad Astra no no but I talk out loud okay. you know? <laughs> ponder the universe um, yeah. some people really like it but it's and it's also it's one of those films where like. The ending is just disappointing. It doesn't. It doesn't have a. Good, it doesn't give you a satisfying a ending. No. There was like a. I it's saw like, a scene that's like a moon buggy race. It's there's like some, yeah, it's a cool. chase where someone's trying to kill him. Yeah, and there's some cool stuff like that. But that it's kind of fun. Kinda like like a movie I did like. This is not from 2019. It was earlier. I did like George Clooney's remake of Solaris. Uh huh. I thought that was pretty good. Never and, seen it. And I like the original Solaris a lot too, but I think they're maybe they're kind of going a little bit for that kind of a vibe a bit. Yeah, yeah it just it just didn't. It without like, the eh. finesse though. Yeah, yeah, and without the satisfaction, it just didn't like leave me satisfied. Well, I have a worst that, according to Rotten Tomatoes and critics in general, uh, they love it. Watchmen, the HBO series. Uh, we have it. We have it all on our DVR. I haven't watched it yet. You know, uh, it's you've watched all of it. Yes. Okay. How, how many episodes? I think it's eight. Okay. Eight or nine. Is and it tell the whole story within those eight? Or yeah, well, pretty much. I mean, there's an arc. There is okay. an arc. There was supposed to be a second series, but now it's da- canceled. Yeah, Damon oh, really? Lindelof, the showrunner and writer, is has decided he's not interested, and he was one of the writers of Lost. Yeah, I'm not a giant fan. And Prometheus. And oh, I'm, oh, I'm really a non-fan because after Watchmen, I mean, I'm a big fan of Watchmen, the the book and the movie. I like the movie. Yeah. The take on it is almost a little bit like The Dark Knight Returns. It's like it's a little bit later and, and where are the heroes now? And it's kind of a revisionist look at them later mm. on in their careers or lives. What, what did they end up doing? Where are they incarcerated? Oh, okay. But it's it's got new characters along a new politically relevant backdrop of racism and fascism, which can play beautifully. It and hits it pretty hard. It is. And it's just shitty storytelling to me because it's the way that everything is revealed very, very slowly, achingly slowly. Achingly slowly. And, and I'm supposed to sort of try to piece this puzzle together. But the point of it is that everything that I love about Watchmen, none of it is in this series. Completely agree. Like in what way? Like what, what? Be, because No I, superheroes. Because hardly. there's no fucking superheroes. I, I, I love those characters. And in The Dark Knight Returns, you concentrate on Batman. In this Watchmen... Those characters aren't even around. I mean, barely. Mm-hmm. I mean, Jeremy Irons, mm-hmm. he plays Osmandius. Um, Osmandius, and yeah. he's he's terrific. But what they decide he's, to do, course, with, but what they yeah. decide to do with him is shitty. And it's just like the whole thing is ill conceived to me. Mm-hmm. Here's what I liked about it. I did like by the last episode. I was like, okay, I like this. Mm-hmm. Like I liked how they connected all the threads, mm-hmm. and that part was good. But I felt like you could have told that story yes. then in three episodes. It did not justify the whole series. Sitting and through. there's so many scenes in that show, which once again, I'm going to go back to, you really wanted to make your indie drama mm-hmm. and you threw these scenes into this yeah. show. There's a lot of yeah. like stuff with the families yeah. that just goes on and on it's and endless. on. It's endless. Wow, like, that's disappointing. But by the end, there is some good stuff in there. And there's a handful of episodes, especially the last episode, which brings everything together. I was like, oh, that's kind of neat. But I just wish it was done differently, mm-hmm. and it didn't need to be Watchmen, right? <laughs> it didn't need right. to be watched. Oh, hey. oh, oh, oh. <laughs> put, him, put him on the board. Put him on the board. Oh, well, I, I, know I haven't seen this, but from listening to you guys talk about it, I would say the polar opposite of that. Yeah. Yeah. The Boys. Of course. The Boys is now so good, is... so solid, yeah. does not drag things out. No. Everybody's good. So edgy, so like fun tackles topics of religion and homosexuality, like everything. Corporation, like it's so good. Yeah. So good. That that's a show that consistently I kept hoping, okay, don't screw it up, don't screw it up, and they don't. (laughs) I thought it was pitch perfect all the way through. 
you know how you watch a show, like you've started it, and someone will give you that line about like, oh, by episode four, it really starts to take yeah, off. Yes, man. Yes. Yes. Oh, yeah, it has yeah. to sit through, sit through four fucking shitty episodes yeah. to get to... No. But this one is just uh. from the first one to the last one. It's just pure joy. And that cast, oh my God. <laughs> and... My brother-in-law, Derek Robertson, co-creator of the original comic series. So, yeah. so look, look. Let's let's put all our cards on the table here. Okay, <laughs> you're not saying this because the guy who co-created the boys <laughs> is your brother-in-law, is it? I you, wouldn't be this effusive. If yeah, I was yeah, just yeah. trying to promote him, I would go. Yeah, you know, yeah. It's, a, it's a really entertaining, fun. You know, because yeah, yeah, yeah. I know sense you, the lie you in would, my voice. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. No, it's true. Like uh, that's why I was kind of like, I hope this is good. You know, yeah, right. Because yeah. Matt's going to play yeah. into Matt. Derek should be proud. Yeah. And rarely do you see something that good, especially in the movies. Yeah, but yeah, and it yeah. really does work well as a show. Yes, yes, an ongoing story. And I just I love everybody in it. I know, I know, and and that's story builds as opposed to just treading water like Watchmen does yeah. for so many of those episodes this one every moment means something and matters yeah so um, Watchmen was on HBO right right and then the boys is boys on, is on uh, Amazon Prime Am- yeah yeah Amazon Prime right right okay yeah no it's definitely we're checking out well another comic character uh the Joker um, yes, yes. You know, out of completely out of left field, Interesting. suddenly what do you think? nominated for all these Oscars. I loved it. I loved it too. I I saw the tri- loved it. I I yeah. I liked it a lot. I don't know, if loved it, but I I appreciate well, I mean, it a no, lot. I, I, he is fantastic in it. It's Taxi Driver. It is. It's I mean, very, it's Taxi Driver. It's King of, of Comedy says, and King, and of, King of, comedy. of Comedy. It's King yeah, of Comedy. Very yeah. much both those. Movies. And here, here, that's kind of the problem that I have with it. Because it's really king of comedy. Well, once you have De Niro and the, and the yeah. talk show. And, and yeah. I have some problems with it mm-hmm. as a movie as a whole. But I would say just for Joaquin Phoenix, yeah. mm-hmm. see this movie. Yeah. Yeah. It's, yeah. He, may, he may win the Oscar. He is great. He is great. And he keeps you connected to this film. Yes, he does. You know, I remember seeing the trailer and thinking there's not really anything that makes me want to see this. I know. I wasn't really that, that interested either. But then, yeah. And I it know. wasn't until all the like nominations, like, yeah. all right, what's what's this about? And, and, you know, honestly, by the by the middle of it, I was like, okay, now I get it. But isn't, really... it's, isn't it interesting like how when DC Universe, they start making their movies and like, Justice League, and it was it's criticized for trying too hard to be dark and you know and edgy. <laughs> but you, if you do it from the character, you know what I mean. Like like Joker's first and foremost, all that darkness, all that turmoil and angst starts with his character. Right. That's what makes it work. Not yeah. like making a superhero and okay, now Batman, you're going to be really dark, and Superman, you're going to be really dark. Like, right. but this is just a a flawed, fucked up, put upon character, and that works. Yeah, he's, he's kind of, he's portrayed as relatable in a, yeah, in a weird way. Yeah. And then by the end, when he becomes the Joker and he's psycho, it's like, yeah, I can understand like can the building buy. blocks of how, what brought him to that. And right, it wasn't see, just he yeah. fell into a vat yeah. and now he's right. crazy. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. And you can see by that ending, okay, this is a joke. Now he's fucking dangerous and, yeah. he, and people are going to follow him and it's going to be bad. But, you know but, what I mean? But in following him through the course of the film, you're also, because you're focused on him, in those moments where he has this kind of manic glee, you share that glee. The, yeah, first, yeah. the first time I ever shared that with the Joker, even with Heath Ledger, who was who was wonderful, this was the first time I, I actually felt that empathetic toward the Joker when it comes to that evil glee. And yeah, it's like, yeah. wow, that's like that's I can see what makes the makeup that builds that character now. Like, I mean, yeah, yeah. I know. Yeah, no, it's, I, I think I really enjoyed it. Yeah. yeah. I liked it. I didn't, I didn't, uh, the movie as a whole, I didn't love, but I really loved him. Yeah. Okay. I thought it was kind of anticlimactic. They also took a few editorial choices with uh, the Bruce Wayne family. Like his dad is portrayed as a kind of a, a Donald Trump type dick. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah. That was. I didn't mind that. Though. That was kind of cool. Yeah, yeah, I didn't mind that. Yeah, it's just interesting to me. Like of all the the tries that they've done with this DC universe, and they this comes out, and it's just it's not a superhero movie. You know, it's right. it's that's what maybe why it's. And good. there was so much controversy around it that I thought was unjustified when I saw it. I'm like, what, what was there? Yeah. Yeah, the, yes. the, oh, it was way yes. too dark yes. and oh. violent, and it's, it's, and it's about the Joker. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you know what I love though is also the period and the gritty. Like it's Gotham, but it looks for all the world like the neighborhoods I grew up in in New York. And I love the fact that it's 1981, and the Waynes walk out of a movie theater, and it's a double feature of yeah. Blowout and Zorro the Gay Blade. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that was funny. I like that. that. Awesome. I like that. Yeah. Now, I would like to see that film 
as a building block to build a new DC yeah. universe. That would be cool. Yeah. Totally. And, and everybody, yeah. so everyone is kind of inhabiting this Scorsese S world. Yeah. 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 That would be really cool. That would be interesting. That would be an, an interesting take and a fresh take, yeah. dare I say. Yeah. I don't know if Scorsese would like that, though. <laughs> <laughs> and we can get him involved. Hey. Yeah, hey. Maybe this could be it, his redemption. Yeah. How about this for a superhero thing? And this is in my best list. Okay. Mm -hmm. I love this show. I'm assuming a lot of you haven't seen it because you have to have the channel, but The Doom Patrol. Yeah, you've told us me about that. Yeah, I haven't seen the that Doom yet. The Doom Patrol is so good, and if you were a fan of the comics that were done by Grant Morrison, you'll love this show. I, we have talked about it before. I don't want to go too yeah. much into it, but it's crazy and surreal, and a lot of people might not know this, but apparently there's this rumor that's gone around that the X-Men was sort of stolen from the Doom Patrol, like the idea for it. Huh, really? So because Doom it's Patrol these, is that old? From yeah, the, oh, yeah. Oh, okay. And that they're like the weird superhero team. Mm -hmm. yeah, right. you the know, misfits. Yeah, yeah, the misfits. And Brendan Fraser is wonderful. Wow, I haven't heard his name in a while. Yeah. In this role, he's a primitive android. Mm -hmm. But- he is so good with the voice stuff. And every once in a while you see him in his pre-Android days and he's, you know, doughy and he's <laughs> Brendan Fraser now. Yeah. Right. But that's one, if you haven't seen it, go to DC Universe and maybe just sign up for a month or whatever. Yeah. Okay. That's cool. <laughs> there was the Swamp Thing show. I, oh, yeah. I watched. I didn't get all the way through that one because I didn't. To me, that was disappointing. Really? The Swamp Thing stuff is great, mm -hmm. but the storyline is plotting and the actors in that thing, oh my, it's just, it's some rough going. Really? But when you see the Swamp Thing do its stuff, you know, when you mm -hmm. see Alec Holland in all his glory being Swamp Thing, it's fun. And I just wish there were more of that because right, it's like right. right out of an Alan Moore comic, the mm -hmm. way okay. he does all these. And it's horrific. Mm -hmm. Cool. Uh, Doom Patrol is on what? DC like, Universe. DC Universe and Swamp Thing. Also on DC Universe. And is already canceled, by the way. Oh. Yeah. And it was doing well. And I think there was some sort of legal issue that caused this. But I would say it's worth checking out. And I'll bet you it's one of those things that somebody will tell me, oh, in episode five, it really you know, <laughs> right. gets going. Right. Well, but there is some great stuff there. Another big DC movie from 2019 that I, I have a feeling I'm going to be in a position to have to defend <laughs> is uh, Sh really? Shazam. Shazam! Oh, which, which, Shazam. I, which I enjoyed, which I, I really you appreci like that movie? I appreciated the take. It's basically big with superhero. You know, it's exactly. A little big. It's yeah. exactly to the big. point where they have them dancing on a piano, uh, yeah. minus mm -hmm. the humor. <laughs> <laughs> I, I have to admit, I went in there thinking. I mean, that movie got a lot of good reviews. Yes, it did. I I didn't hate it like Matt, but I'm like. Yeah, Mr. I, I Hater over here. I was here. like, I think both wife and I, after we watch it, it's kind of like, <laughs> ah, yeah, I was like, okay. There was enough Shazam. There was enough of him being, you know, in the He's doom. kind of a jerk. But like, the, the villain was super lame. Oh. Talk of the lame, one of the lamest villains I've ever seen in a superhero Honestly, film. I had enough fun with the hero and with there his little buddy and the him. stuff that they did. And he battles the seven deadly sins, and yeah. that was completely that, 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 ridiculous. That went into like Green Lantern territory. Yeah. That oh, totally reminded me of Green Lantern. Yeah. Like, oh, Oh, look at all the CGI yeah, crap whoa. and like all these. Ugh. I'm not terrible. Saying, I'm not saying it's as good as the other stuff I'm recommending I'm just, here, but I enjoyed it. I I'm was pleasantly surprised watching it on HBO. Okay, that, well, that's always that's what's always happened, happened to you. But like, what, I, that I have tolerance <laughs> to, to a movie <laughs> that I like. I just you didn't walk you? out on it after the first half hour. No, I, I, we I, used I, to worship <laughs> you. There were things. How much <laughs> reefer have you been smoking? <laughs> Get off the goofballs, um, but like, Gunness. But like the Actually. movie, I think because the movie, I mean, the movie got a lot of good reviews. It made a shitload of money, too. It did. And, and like, it did, and yeah. That's why, that's I, why guess I Maybe it. I was going to too high expectations, but like, I'm like, eh, it's no. okay. But Look, like, my expectations it's, weren't that high. Again, his, I was watching His, on his costume was cool. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but like, to be honest, I had a lot more fun watching the... Uh, Captain Marvel Shazam show on Saturday morning TV. <laughs> All right, I did. It holds yeah. up. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I mean, I mean, yeah. yeah it was, it was alone. Just, that to me is a disappointment. Yeah, but right. um, you know. uh, are they making another one? Let's hope. Yeah, I think so. Oh God. Hey, what about this one? <laughs> okay. Game of Thrones. Game of Thrones. Oh, I'm glad you brought that shows up. Shows that finally ended in the 2019. Right? Yes. Yeah. And and I know that there are a lot of people that are upset. I I have to share with you. 
that I really enjoyed it. Oh, I did too, but I, I have to admit it really it, enjoyed it. Ended I with, did. Ended with a, ended with a whimper a little bit. You know, yeah. you know what? A see, big see, time. No, no, big no, time. no. See, I'm gonna no, I'm gonna defend it, and I'll tell you why. You mm-hmm. love Starbucks. <laughs> no, no, I don't. But what I was going to tell you was the funny thing is everyone had this expectation as to how it was supposed to end, and there is actually a great line in the last episode where a character says, "Well, people aren't happy about this. Some people aren't happy about that, which means it must be a great compromise." And exactly, that's be- okay, because yeah. because not everyone was happy in in that world as to what was going to happen. And there was so with much the expectation. To yes, end that, and yeah. and to me, it's like, oh my gosh, you're absolutely right. No, I mean, and, no, not a great compromise, a shitty compromise. That's that's oh, what oh, to me. Oh, yeah, okay, yeah, a shitty yeah, compromise. Yes. Come here. Yes. Yeah. So. They wrote in a shitty excuse for their <laughs> shitty ending. Brilliant. Brilliant. Okay. Look, you guys know, I advocated to yeah, get yeah. A, a dedicated Game of Thrones episode yeah. leading up to the finale, and we were looking for the perfect guest. I was into it. I was reading books, trying to get the character names. <laughs> I thought about going back and reading the novels. After the last, great. After the last season, though, I'm just like, you know what? I'm over Game of Thrones. Well, I don't give a shit anymore. I was disappointed yeah. that much because really? a lot wow. of a lot of the character arcs and where the show seemed to be leading and where I kind of wanted it to go, still being open minded, didn't go there. Jon Snow seemed to have this kind of lineage. There was this promise, and even if he didn't fulfill that promise, it doesn't mean that where he ended up was going to be the least bit satisfying. Jamie Lannister had yes. a character arc yes. that did not in any way, shape, or form dictate his decisions in the last few episodes of mm-hmm. that series, for me, dramatically. Mm-hmm. Uh, Daenerys, yeah, I, yeah. Da- Daenerys Targaryen. Yeah. <clears throat> there was a yin and a yang to her, always, consistently throughout the entire series. Mm-hmm. And then she's just, just one note. One note. Yeah. Only dark. It's like, well, wait a second. You're you're robbing us of a lot of the richness that made the show valuable to one as a hundred percent. I disagree because what was one of the problems with her father? Her father had gone insane, right? Okay. So my logic was, it's happening to her. That's how I interpreted it. They didn't take enough time to sell it. Now, it was, that part was rushed. Now, now, now yeah. I will say well, this. I'm, 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 I'm talking. I'm okay. talking here. Oh, I'm, I'm talking. Okay. Hey, let's let Larry talk for a second. <laughs> hey, whoa, 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 I've been letting hey. you guys go the whole show. Oh. No, what I wanted to say to you is I agree. In in They've had for epi- season one, season two, season three, like 10 episodes, 12 episodes. And then when it got to the second to the last season, it's like, oh, we're only going to have eight episodes. And then for this last one, the one that everyone's waiting for, for, they only did six episodes. Yeah. They go, well, we made our ep- episodes in like an hour and a half. But you're right. I do feel I do feel that there were some things that were a bit rushed. I'm not going to argue with you there. I, I agree with that. But still, at the end, when the whole thing happened, when the, all the loose ends were tied up, yeah, I, I was satisfied. I was happy with it. And you can't deny, I mean, the whole series is just uh, amazing. It's one of the most impressive the series most spectacular ever made. until that thing. point. Yeah. But like, I have to say this, and to Larry's side, though, would any ending be satisfying? Yeah. I'm, I'm just not. saying, I'm just saying because the show is so strong and it's so well loved, it's so popular, it's so well done, it's so intricate. Could you do any finale that would be satisfying? Here, my argument is that that storyline that they did in that final season would have been fine. The problem is that it was rushed. Right. And if you just opened it up a little bit and if they, we saw a slow change in Daenerys and, yeah. and and some reasons why she's going into this you know dark area place. this dark place that that would have been better and it would have justified things instead of having what's her face jump out of the tree and kill the <laughs> you know <laughs> well let's not let, yeah, I mean yeah, I, I'm, 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 I, I don't want to yeah, I don't want to get into yeah I don't want to give it yeah, away it's, but. it's interesting because I don't know if it was like you know they knew they weren't going to do another season or they had built up no, so no, much here's the other thing too that people don't realize the the books don't go that far right, they haven't right. he hasn't finished writing them so basically these two guys who I, I think are amazing. Ben, ben um, Benoff David and Benoff and Weiss, yeah. the, these guys, they they basically said to R. R. Martin, they go, hey, so tell us what what's the basic gist of what happens. So Martin said, well, this is kind of what I what I think is going to happen as I write it. So they kind of took these kernels and did a lot right, of stuff right. on their own. So I'm not actually sure if 
when Martin gets around to finishing the the final novels, if it's going to go that way. But right. as, look, I didn't read the books. I came into Game of Thrones late when it was in its. I, fifth, I came in very late. I, mean, I watched fifth season. It, yeah, fifth season. And my wife and I, from episode one, we were hooked. Yeah. And and so we carried it all the way through to the very end. And so my criticisms. I mean, I hear the thing about about oh, I didn't like the ending the way. I hear that. I understand, but you know, actually, Sean, you're right. What what possible ending would have made everybody happy? And I just loved it. I really did. I, mean, I really a liked super where impressive it went. Show, you know, overall, yeah, I would mm-hmm. absolutely recommend that show. It's one of the best fantasy series. Yeah. And I, there was a time when I was like, I don't know how you could get any better than this. Right, as right. A, just doing a TV show like this and right. pull it off, and, and I, it looks so beautiful. And I would mm-hmm. like to. I, I would hope maybe we can do, dedicate an episode uh, show to the Game of Thrones because there's so much. Again, I, that's something I would have loved to do. Now I'm like, meh. Yeah, me too. And, you know, John, John Snow, let a even reluctant hero be a hero. You know, he had a chance in the scene, where the winter fight scene, where to, to fight a dragon. They pissed it away. Didn't even have a yep. chance to do that. Yeah. Yep. And, you know, okay, he goes off. All right, I, I won't spoil don't, it. But, don't but do it's, that. But it's just like all of this following this character and seeing this development and there's just, I don't know. I, I, I don't know what to come away from it with. I just, uh, meh. But having his future self come Back in time and kill him and then take over his role. <laughs> and then Nick Fury shows up at the end. Spoiler, oh, that's spoiler. Cool. <laughs> so are, are we saying it's well, you're best saying, or it's worst? A, a disappointment for 2018. Disappointment. 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 Yeah. Okay, okay yeah. so. so t- I, I love the first few episodes leading up to the winter fight. Uh-huh. I loved it. Mm-hmm. That's one of the worst episodes of the entire series. And one of my least favorite episodes of any TV battle. show. The battle. The battle. Yeah. Mm-hmm. The, and for listeners, you know, it takes place in this it kind takes, of mini- It takes place in the dark. <laughs> that's the well, main thing. There's, yeah, yeah, that's a big problem. The funny big thing, problem. The funny thing is, you know, so what's the deal? There's this giant battle, and the criticisms that, that have been said is- it's very, very dark how you can't see certain things that are, are supposed to happen. And then the director and the cinematographer said, well, we're trying to show that in the war, in the battle, it, it is dark and you don't know what's going on. And I think Bullshit. it was kind of a, I think it was kind of a cheap excuse. And yep. then the cinematographer yeah, yeah. made a crack about, well, I can't help it if you don't know how to program your TV. And it's like, oh, so my, I especially th- that's program just my it. TV no, for my, Game of Thrones. I shouldn't have to. I shouldn't have to program my yeah, TV to have not. the right yeah. settings or whatnot. That I think was a stupid yeah. thing to yeah, say. Yeah. It should work on my still, TV with the antenna. Still, yeah. still, whatever complaints I may have yeah. about yeah. certain no, things. No, I, look, I it's, still, I it's, still love this. I still overall, love the, series. the series is really, I mean, really it's good. actually it's something just, that I would get on Blu-ray. Quite yeah, yeah, really, okay. Has anybody seen Parasite? Not yet. It's on my list. I loved it. It's good. I, I, everybody, I, everybody it. I know uh, loves it. I didn't Except love for it. James. I did not love it. I did <laughs> really? not. Really? Yeah. Wow. So is this like a mirror universe thing? <laughs> they sent a different James? No, I, I think it's one of the most overrated movies of the year. <gasps> Ooh. Ooh. Along with Jojo Rabbit and Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. But you see, you didn't Once finish. Upon a Time in Hollywood? Whoa, 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 you don't like whoa, whoa. that? You didn't finish Jojo Rabbit. Yeah, you can't. You didn't okay. finish I it. I, okay, in fairness, yeah. I cannot you show you that. You do that a lot. You, you said like, you only... You, you criticize oh, Friday the 13th minutes. movies that you've never seen. <laughs> yeah, you you fin- cannot you do got that. 20 okay. minutes through Jojo Rabbit. Oh, this comedy I don't like. So you go see a Star Wars movie that retreads every fucking Star Wars movie that ever happened and that's brilliant Mm -hmm. and yet an actual original story that's different and weird and offbeat and that's a big fail for you. No, I just, and he doesn't only get 20 minutes into it. And look, look, says, I'm out Parasite. Here. Parasite is over two hours, exactly halfway into this movie. Something happens. It sets off the chain of events to the second half. And I won't go into what the, yeah, the don't describe, describe the story. But, but it's totally fun. I stopped caring about the characters right at the halfway point, And nothing that happened made me care about them again. All right, so and Kylo Ren, though he's a fucking genius, and he's so charismatic. <laughs> if Kylo Ren was a parasite, look, if this then. is your argument, I just can't win. <laughs> well, that's what we're looking for. <laughs> now that's film talk. Yeah. And once upon a time in Hollywood, I'm sorry. Uh, look, I, pure joy, I, pure joy. The yeah, joy, really enjoy it. the joy is in for me. Correct me if I'm wrong. The loving. Recreation of the period. Yes, well, that's part of it. It's a big part of it. That's 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 all of it. No, it's not. It's Quentin Tarantino saying, look, I can afford to recreate Hollywood in this period, so I'm going to go ahead and do it. How about uh, the comedy? The comedy, the third act of that 
movie. DiCaprio is, and I'm, Pitt I'm and laughing yeah. out loud. But, but, but DiCaprio, I didn't laugh out loud once. DiCaprio and Pitt's characters are they're these two likable dumbasses. But DiCaprio is playing. His role is really interesting because he's like best thing of, I've ever seen. Of, him of, in. He's like a this kind of fuck up actor, but then. He pulls himself up and does a good job. Like, like he surprises you. He, he he's never the character is never predictable to me, and it's yeah. like you you can't help but like him. The western <sighs> you know. when they're shooting the western, yeah, that yeah. scene and the scene with the little girl, the little girl, and in the scene where he's beating himself up about about, in the about his trailer. role, yeah, like he's like to himself. It's like I love that. It's uh, so I cannot, I cannot right. Share. And I'm I surprised. I, I'm saw surprised because it, it the movie's made for you. I I know, and I saw it twice, thinking, okay, maybe I missed something. Look, Bruce Lee shows up, and that's that was hilarious. What's the fucking point? Except he's Tarantino that was, when he wants to do it. That was a great scene. The shot, the shots of just Brad Pitt driving his car in Hollywood, listening to the '60s um, radio music and the and the commercials. That's love all. It. That's all it is. No, but that's I love no, that. And though. as far as like, okay, there's a scene where um, DiCaprio realizes that uh, his neighbor is Polanski, and he's all impressed. I don't believe a washed up cowboy actor would be that impressed by a director like Polanski at that point in Polanski's career. I disagree. I think, in Hollywood, I think Tarantino's excited about Polanski. I disagree. In Hollywood no. at that time, Polanski was huge and everybody knew him. And any yeah. second rate fucking actor would know, like, oh my God, the big Especially director would absolutely, TV absolutely know. A that. TV actor like that, I didn't absolutely. buy it. And also, I don't know anything about Sharon Tate, but everything I've ever seen about her did not match Margot Robbie's portrayal of this prancing, posing bimbo airhead. Who was that- a. In the movie? Yeah, Margot Robbie as Sharon Tate. Why is she a prancing probing? Because there's nothing else to her character. I don't know if she has a line of dialogue. If I were what? Polanski watching this movie, I'd be a little offended that Sharon Tate was portrayed that way. I think she's played with she's a lot of perfectly heart. perfectly fine. And yeah. bimbo. Wow. Jeez. Wow. <laughs> <laughs> and I, I think this is just Tarantino ejaculating on the screen. But, but because yeah, first of all, <laughs> Tarantino always ejaculates all over every film he makes. Yes. That's uh, what he and, does. And sometimes, and it works. sometimes it works and sometimes yeah. it doesn't. This I'm gonna time bar- it works. <laughs> I'm going to borrow Larry's line. <laughs> all right. <laughs> I was going to say, no. okay, and, and of, course, <laughs> of course, once upon a time in Hollywood, I haven't said it, I let you guys go on. It is, of course, the pinnacle of it. science fiction. It's the pinnacle of science fiction, fantasy, and horror. Well, no, right? it's a genre. It's, it's, it's Tarantino. It's, it's an it's alternate Polanski. future. Yes, it's, it's alter, an alternate future. It's an alternate future. Oh, alternate future. Oh, oh, alternate future. Oh, 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 yeah, 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 yeah. Well, it's an alternate okay. past. Yeah, and Inglorious past. Bastards was too, but so what? Yeah, it doesn't. No, but sometimes like, point? I liked this because it was actually a fun, lighthearted Tarantino film. I mean, I thought it was. I thought scene, it was filled with like, such life and joy. Yeah, yeah I agree. and not, not, heart. Granted, like the other movie that Larry said, I do think it's not for everybody. Like my my wife didn't like it that much. Yes, it's very um in what do you call it? in baseball? What's the word? Uh, when it, it's, it's yeah. in jokes. Are you asking me in baseball? A strike, a ball, a no, bunt. The, a term, the term that you say when it's like it's an in, jo- in, in joke. Foul inside ball. Inside baseball. Inside baseball. You ever heard baseball. that term before? It's very inside baseball. Larry, he's asking me if I've heard the term <laughs> inside I know. baseball. It has nothing, it has <laughs> yeah. nothing to do he with baseball. To explain to me what baseball is, first of all. It, has not, it's, it means it's like very, it's all the all the references and all the stuff of, of 60s Hollywood if you're not familiar with that, maybe it's not as much fun. How about I, just I, I, Granted. But but look, I have crapped on DiCaprio a number of times yeah, in the past. You crapped on a lot of things. He's, <laughs> sure, I'm not. He's, hey, look, he's you're like really, Mr. I crapper. Like <laughs> <laughs> I am. <laughs> crap on, crap off. That crapper. But in this movie, he's so good. I, yeah, lo- I, really I, good. I love him. I think it's so great. And it makes me then feel bad about like other movies. Although The Revenant, I'm never going to like that. But <laughs> right. I just, I was so impressed. I was like, wow. Well, he's you, kind of like Tarantino's muse now. Like he puts in, in all his I love movies, it. Give him another like, one. Yeah, yeah. He's great. Yeah, he's but, so great. And Brad Pitt is wonderful. He's, like, everybody, he's, he's so funny. Yeah, he's really and, good. And, and that third act. Oh, oh yeah. I wish God. I saw the movie you guys saw because I could that's not. interesting. All right, let me, well, I got to throw one more out there okay. then because this is sort of a, it would be like a double feature with that movie. Okay. Dolomite? Yeah, my name is Dolomite. Yeah. Did you yeah. see that? I did, yeah. Loved it. It was, it was any, fun. Any, I enjoyed any, it. Were there any bimbos in that movie? <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I will say this. It's from the writers of Ed Wood. Yeah. yeah. And it's a lot like Ed Wood. It is. So it's, it's the same exact... Yeah. Uh, it ends with a premiere... Outline. Yeah. is, And it's definitely a little bit of a romanticized look at it, obviously. Mm-hmm. But it's so fun and like... It's a joyous film. And seeing yeah. and seeing Eddie Murphy act again... Lovely. It's fantastic. So great. Yeah, yeah, he's great. I mean, there's some scenes in that movie where Eddie Murphy... 
as Rudy Ray Moore is working out before he do- ever does his Dolomite first set, and he's working it all out. Like you forget how good of an actor Eddie Murphy is. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I hope he's back now. I hope he does and, a lot uh, more. And um, what's his face? Everybody's great. Oh, Wesley Snipes. Wesley Snipes. <laughs> Snipes. Hilarious. Yeah. Hilarious. Hilarious. All the stuff yeah. that he's doing, where he's yeah, like, he's... he's a tough guy, but he's kind of you know effeminate. Yeah, yeah. Too, yeah and it's it, hilarious. I just loved it. I've watched that twice, and just it brings me such joy. Yeah, that's cool. So at least you liked that one. I did. Okay. I, I love the period stuff, but I, I felt it also had a story that wasn't as self indulgent as Once Upon a Time in Hollywood. So okay, there you go. all right, yeah, yeah. all right. Yeah. I like to throw this out there. I don't think any of you guys have seen the show, but I really enjoyed the uh, Netflix series Dark Crystal: Age of Resistance. Ooh, oh, okay. really good! Like, like it is good, huh? It's. I think it takes place before the film. I think. I'm pretty sure I got that right. But um, what's amazing is they have like there's little bits of CGI, but it's Muppets again. But mm. you go with it. It's good. It's and it, they can fully realize the world a lot more now because they have more of a budget, and that's where the CGI works. I really enjoyed it. It was a Netflix series, I think eight episodes. Really good. I mean, it helps to be a fan of the film, which I am, but it's just uh, really enjoyable. Just talk about like really all the Brian Froud designs and they do a lot more with like the characters. Mark Hamill does one of the voices of the sketches and um, uh, I got to tell you, I've never seen Dark Crystal. Yeah, I mean, it's, uh, it's good. It's, uh, it's uh, I mean, it's 80s, but uh, that yeah, was, that was, that, that that was, was a big thing back yeah, then. And that was Hansen's first, you know, venturing yeah, out for, doing, away from the Muppets yeah. to something a little more serious. It's pretty slow moving. Bowie, is. Bowie's in Labyrinth, right? Yeah. That's Labyrinth, yeah. I have I have a large cardboard standee of Dark Crystal. Cool. Yeah, yeah I but, do. Uh, but if you're, but you're uh, just, Larry, the, your the, daughter would love Dark Crystal. I think no, she would. She, oh, you mean the series? Yeah, yeah. yeah. She, don't think, she doesn't necessarily have like, to see the movie though. The but she mixture would like of it. the Muppets and I fantasy. Know, I'm a little, I know. But they, you well, don't you like. You don't that. like Joy. But they do I it, get it. Yes, but they do I it really that. well. They do it really well. And it's it, like, oh, there's a fantasy Muppet. I, have a, I, have I don't a, like it. Uh, I do have a tumultuous relationship with Joy. I see. I thought it was like, oh, it's another Yoda puppet. I don't want to see. It's a lot of yeah. I mean, I think yeah. I think that might have soured me on the whole puppet thing. Though. Okay, well, how about something that's not a puppet? All right. How about something go. that's really go, scary? Baby, go, And it's got a clown. How about It, Chapter 2? Yeah. I have not yes. yet seen it. I have not I seen, seen it. it. I saw it. Ooh. And I want to see it. Yeah, no, me too. Yeah. I, it, as it's many list. problems mm-hmm. as I had with the first one, yes. I did enjoy it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. There, it's, it's a really good treatment of that story. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Very well done. So uh, I take it you understand that what the second film is is these kids have They're grown adults up. Now. Yeah. But what's neat is they go back and forth between kids and adults. And I thought the cast that they got for yeah. adults was spot on. Bill Hader. They were just all the adults, all the adults, but all Jessica's the adults to casting. me they all seem like these were the kids grown up. Yeah. And I've heard different people say different things about, oh, I didn't like all the jump scares. You know, it was it was great. I loved how it tied everything up. I liked it a lot. I enjoyed mm-hmm. it. Both parts one and two for me are better play better as a movie than as a novel because mm-hmm. the novel could not suspend my disbelief. The movie it did it easier. But there were things that the first part had that the mm-hmm. second one lacked that would have made it better. Mm-hmm. The town in the first one seemed more real because these children were missing and there there seemed to be a community of adults who were actually concerned about that. That wasn't really focused on in the second one and it seemed to be a little bit more surreal that way. And again, you, you're in a universe where suddenly anything supernatural can happen. Suspense is compromised when that happens. Yeah. So that was a weakness of the second one. But yeah, the cast and, and the So let me team. ask you guys, having not seen it yet, and don't spoil things, but... The big issue I have with the first one is like too much crazy CGI and it's never scary. How how are they with the CGI in the second one? Because like pretty much the same, I think. Yeah, I mean, yeah. I mean, Sean, I don't know if if you didn't like the first one, then maybe you're not gonna like I mean, the I second liked the one. First I one, mean, but not. It wasn't the, scary. It though. wasn't. Yeah, that's that's what it what it comes down to. I think it you wasn't know it's scary. It's right? weird. You guys are. I, I know you guys have seen a lot of horror movies. Maybe you're just so desensitized to it. You're no, like, oh, no. there's scary things. No, no. Guys, I sat you, in a if theater. You're Eleven. Yeah, guys, sure. I sat in a theater. You know, a packed theater, and things happened on screen, and the whole audience just jumped up and flipped out, and there was that relief of oh my gosh oh, I mean it was it was great I mean I, there was a lot of really cool things in the yeah, film I I'm, I'm definitely want to see it it's know. the same thing I think I think there's a connection with it and Stranger Things mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Uh, there's some obvious ones obviously yeah. but uh, when it comes to themes or uh, a tone 
That is why I don't like Stranger Things that much either, because I feel like I'm not even remotely the target audience. I believe the target audience for those films is somebody who's like 12 years old. Well, my and daughter loves that. Yeah. And, and, and Well, I know we're not and, talking and, about yeah. your daughter now. OK, your daughter <laughs> is a child and I love her and she has for a child extremely good taste. Yeah. And she's right. And she's and, been raised well as yes. a horror fan. <laughs> right. And I also think that it's a taste thing, too. Yeah. Because I'm not if some if you enjoy Stranger Things, that's fine. I watch it and I feel like it's a kid show. I'm sorry. Aren't there a lot of people of our generation who do appreciate it because it's nostalgic? Because it takes you back when you were that age. Sure. At, I mean, yes. in that's the what, 80s? That's a, they, so I think that's definitely a target of what that that's show one thing is that to I, do. That's one thing that I get out. Yeah. Of. yeah. But but you you were talking about Once Upon a Time in Hollywood and that being all style and the recreations and everything. And I yeah. think that's what Stranger Things is. It's just one homage. After another. Well, it's that's just... why I don't watch Stranger Things. Oh, you. <laughs> See, now we're friends again. <laughs> but I, I will point out one scene in it that's sort of a centerpiece and is supposed to be, and this isn't really spoiling anything, but Pennywise uh, attacks a child in a funhouse with a hall of mirrors. Yes. And the Bill character, played by James McAvoy, is in a position to try to rescue the kid, and he cannot break through the glass. If you grew up in a New England town that had carnivals passing through, you could break that glass by breathing on it. <laughs> I I just did not buy that scene, and it was one of those little little lapses of reality that kind of takes you out of it. Can I share something with you? Yes. Okay. There was a carnival thing that I went to, and they were they had a fun house, mm -hmm. and I thought it was like a stupid fun house, and they had one of those glass things. Uh huh. And I smacked. I walked right into one of those things, <laughs> uh -huh. and that glass seemed to be. It wasn't like really thin. It seemed really thick to me. Okay. And so. I bought all that. Okay. Because I know what you're saying. but Different it, carnival. <laughs> yeah. I guess so. Do you remember Playland? Yes, I do remember Playland. Did you ever go? Um, what I saw, this uh, Playland is an area... In San Francisco. Uh, in San Francisco that no longer exists. An amusement park. And it was there. It was built in the 30s or yeah. the 40s. And, and then what's happened is it, because of if the weather and stuff, it started to like kind of fall apart and whatnot. Yeah. When I remember going... As a kid, I remember my parents driving around because they took my older brothers there. You know, the older brothers that were mean to me and stuff. Sure. And one of my brothers, he was scared of there's this giant fat lady fat figure. Sally. Fat Sally. That would do this laugh. Yeah. <laughs> at the fun house. Yeah. And it really scared him. And I remember seeing her in like a giant glass case or something like that and because I didn't get to see her move. Yeah, you know, I had no reference. It's like, you know, my older brother had to turn off the radio when the Exorcist music came on. Well, oh, what's okay. that all about? <laughs> yeah. You can't you can't listen to this. No, I was so. very fond of Yeah, Fat you were fond of Fat Sally? <laughs> She's yeah. hot. But they had a fun house there too, didn't they? And I went, I think, more than once for a birthday party. Mm-hmm. And that was a great fun house. I mean, that's, that was like the centerpiece they had some, of Playland. They had dangerous things in there. <laughs> oh, yeah. They had this, uh, sp it's like a Lazy Susan, like yes. a big plate that would spin around and you'd get in the middle of it because that's where you could escape the centrifugal force. Right. Mm -hmm. And this thing would start up and it'd go faster and faster and it'd just start flinging kids <laughs> off it. Oh, my God. Yeah. And uh, yeah, there was a lot of dangerous things. I remember things. they had this like funky bridge. Oh, yeah, these and weird it, things that you walk on that would buckle in the middle. Yeah, right. and, and the funny thing is if you look at it now, it's like the arm things, if they touched your hand, you could crush your hand or something. <laughs> I'm it was sure not, there were a million it was not injuries. Safe. No, wow. but I loved it. I loved that place. And they also had a nice little dark ride, a, a horror dark ride oh, that cool. was fun. So... Let's go to that. <laughs> Let's go back in time and yeah, go to that. Yeah. So you guys haven't seen it, Chapter 2, but I know you've seen this other film, and it's the one film on my list that it's a best but also a worst. Oh, There are ooh, things okay. I love it, but also things about it that maybe not hate, but am not really a fan, and that is... Godzilla, King of the Monsters. Yeah, yeah. yeah. that's on my and list too. And we yep. talked about this, uh, directed by uh, uh, Michael Dottery, and I love all of the monster action. Me too. Yeah, and for the most part, for the know. most, I, I, seriously, Matt, I love all the monster action. Too and, cloudy, but and honestly, I forget the human stuff, no, and, and it's like I almost yeah. couldn't wait. Yeah. I couldn't wait. Is is it like are people bad actors or what? No, it's no. it's like it, it it's wasn't the like the writing. there yeah. wasn't. Yes, Sean, and, and and so it's like if I had that on Blu-ray, I would still probably buy it on Blu-ray. 
because I want to see the monster action. Yeah. The human interaction, I didn't really care about. And w- people have joked about, well, what about the classic Godzilla movies? You know, the funky... You know, there, it's different. There, it, it is. There's it more is. of a story in some well, of those. Well, it's also because it's like, this is a major American production. Yeah. Made for a zillion dollars. Yeah. And, you know, they've taken this property now and trying to do something big with it. I mean, the, the Godzilla films that we grew up in the 60s, they weren't maybe necessarily low budget for Japan Toho standards, but they weren't exactly these big... Yeah, yeah they were, made, they were million pretty dollars much or... made for kids. Maybe not the first film, but like, you know what I mean? Like they... Yeah, but, it is. but those films too, the old Godzilla films, you had the charm of it being Japanese yeah. and the sixties. Yeah, and exotic. I still and I still look back retro at, sci-fi. Yeah. yeah. And you look at uh, the best event of 2019. We did the Creature Fest at the West Valley Library. Yes. Yeah. And we did the Godzilla uh, events <laughs> yeah. also. Yeah. And just watching some of those movies and those trailers at the library with an audience, those films from the sixties, these giant sets with these Actors in completely encased in these elaborate rubber monster suits hung on wires, and there's fire and explosions. Mm. Like, this is amazing. Like, I, I like, can't like, get enough I, of it. Like, yeah. I, like yeah. the mm. fact that they did all that. They did movie after movie, but like they were impressive from a production standard and an effect standard. All oh, the miniatures. I mean, yeah, people, they, maybe now jaded people laugh at them now, but like, it's impressive. That's yeah. why they stuck with us as a kid on TV. Like, you're seeing something you've never seen before. And it's like, there's a number of documentaries, Godzilla documentaries and Toho documentaries. I think you could find most of them on YouTube yeah. that go behind the scenes and you see a workshop where someone makes those miniature buildings. Yeah, yeah. And the amount of detail that went into things like having laundry on a line <laughs> outside an yeah. apartment and stuff yeah. like that is just, there's something that's so joyful about that. Once again, and it's that, not the same with not CGI. Not the same in the Japanese casts. And, and actually, mm-hmm. I think in most cases, all those actors from those earlier films, American or Japanese, they did it with such earnest and sincerity. You know, maybe it's a little corny today, but like today when you, you can have so much money and you're going to cast this film really carefully and you have a fucking huge writer's room of people yeah. r- working on this script. Yeah, you, you expect something better. I know we've yeah. talked about Godzilla King of the Monsters before and... Yeah, the, some of the, the motives of the characters are like, what? why did they do that? That's like, why I always states? go back to yeah. Shin. Yeah, you know, yeah. Because Shin, yeah. to me, is the right way hmm. to do that. Yeah. It's it's weird. So so for listeners, it's not like I hate it. Right, it's, right. I mean, because there's stuff I love about it and stuff I'm not really the yeah. big fan of. So it's kind. Of, I guess if I was going to grade it, I'd give it like maybe a B minus or a C plus. Yeah, right. I do enjoy that. And I enjoy the stuff. fact that- About it, a C. Yeah, I think. and even though what I, everything I just said, I still love the fact that they're making big budget Godzilla films now and they're going to continue doing and, it. Yeah. And, and, and we cool. know we know for the future there's going to be a big Godzilla King Kong and right. and mm. I'm excited about it. I am going to uh, see I'm it. We can really. at least hope that they get the monster stuff right. 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 Skull yeah. Island was way more fun. Oh yeah, yeah. They, no, they, no they I agree. Better. Better. It worked a lot that. better. Yeah, I enjoyed that a lot. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Oh wait, I forgot to say. Go back to Mandalorian. Yes. I take everything back I've ever said about IG88. <laughs> Actually, that's that's not, not IG88 specifically. It's that it's, it's that mo, uh, model of droid because uh-huh. right? isn't the IG something else? Uh-huh. Yes. But that droid kicks ass. Yeah. Oh. Finally, get to see him how they how they work and, and how they as it bounty hunters. Not only that, but it has an arc. Yeah, yeah. It has a character. That, arc. that was a great. That, I love that. So I IG88. Loved now it. I loved now it. I see how they how they actually function as bounty hunters. And but that's cool. what kills me about. <laughs> the first three movies is that you introduce those bounty hunters. Didn't yeah. that say to you like, okay, we're yeah. going to see them in action. Yeah, true. And then nothing. That's true. Well, they were, they were, they were teased, so if I yeah. bring my IG 88 figure here, you're going to go, Hey, all right. Yes, that's yes, cool. I will bow down to him. Yes, cool. I'm talking that's about cool. the large uh, <laughs> action figure from we 1980. Have, oh, I know. We have that one too. Yeah. Oh really? Well, well, no, the reissued one. Oh, oh. <laughs> why is that bad? Why is that bad? Yeah. It's not bad. It's just, you know, I have... Why is one that's older somehow better than the newer one? Yeah, we have it out of the package on our shelf. Yeah, what's wrong with that? We can touch it and lick it and everything. Mine's in my ass right now. (laughs) (laughs) Not all of it. He's sitting. Bosk is a little tougher on the ass. (laughs) Bosk is a little, yeah. All right. Uh, I can tell you stories about Bosk. Well, you know what? We could go on and on. No, no. No, we could, though. We could, and we are, right? (laughs) Yes. Yeah. Is there something else you wanted to add? Well, not about that, but I thought we were going to go into a new area. Yeah, we should and I, so, like to explore some other areas. Um, you brought up James, James McAvoy. Uh-huh. Did we all see Glass? No. No. 
You didn't? Okay. Did you see Split? Yes, no, I didn't. I saw Split. I enjoyed Split. Split, I thought, was really good, and it was surprising to me yes. because it was a good M. Night Shyamalan movie. Right. Mm-hmm. I heard Glass was not good, though. Glass is not good. Oh. Really? Well, no, what, no, why? Because I... What did, what did he do the r- whole, wrong, which he did right with Split? Um, first of all, a thousand different poor plot points and logic flaws. Mm-hmm. Okay. The best part of the movie, once again, is James McAvoy. Oh. Right. It's fun to see Bruce Willis and Samuel L. Jackson back. That was neat. Mm-hmm. But the way the whole story comes together, and at one point, they're all in like the same asylum, or it's like a detention facility, a, a research lab. But the security, how they... <laughs> they've worked out the security of how they're going to keep them there. It's just so muddy and stupid. Mm. That's too bad. I was looking forward to it because I did yeah. really like Split. I thought I got excited to see Bruce Willis at the end. I was like, okay. Mm-hmm. It had so many possibilities, but then, yeah, just it was That's just too one giant wet fart. Oh. Has anybody seen, and I've not seen either of these films, but um, have you seen Dark Phoenix? Because I heard that was pretty bad. I heard that, that was really no, bad. Yeah. I didn't see it, no. And I'm curious about the new Terminator film, too. Have not, have seen, not that. seen it. Yeah, I want to see that, too. So, All just, right. Just that they brought back Linda Hamilton is pretty yeah, cool. Yeah, yeah. Very cool. So where are you guys with Star Trek Discovery? I have not I, seen I have it. Not seen it. Uh, we've been watching it. I thought, I thought you weren't too crazy about it. I feel like I'm a Star Trek completist. Right. And mm-hmm. so I wanted to watch all Star Trek. Mm-hmm. And This is a new season now of, of Discovery, right? Yes. Okay. Now, where I'm at right now is just getting toward the end of the first season. Okay. And I have to say, it does get better as it goes along. Okay. And they bring in the mirror universe, and there's some things that happen within the mirror universe oh. that are actually pretty interesting, where you know there were some things that were set up in the earlier episodes that then you know get paid off hmm. okay. in, in those later ones. That's cool. And so <clears throat> I still hate the uniforms. I'm not crazy about the ship. I despise the Klingons and Why? what they did to them because they just, they don't look like Klingons. Mm. Everybody looks too good. Everybody mm. looks too fancy. Mm. Like the Starfleet uniforms look like, I've said this before, but they look like they're for Star Trek themed casino waiters. It's just <laughs> terrible. Wow. It's just not my thing. Is Doug Jones in it? Two actors in it. They're great. And Doug Jones is one of them. Cool. Cool. Yeah. Okay. But we're going to watch the second season, which I hear is a lot better. I hear they bring back uh, Christopher Pike and that he's supposed to be great. Oh. Josh Gilland said that he's now one of his favorite captains. Oh, so, yeah, so, we'll see. So they're going to probably watch Picard then, right? Because I'm curious about that. I am too. Yeah. I'm, yeah. I'm also a tad trepidatious. Yeah. yeah. Who's playing Picard? <laughs> Why is that funny? He may. He, yeah. <laughs> it's it's Patrick Stewart. Oh, he's coming back. Yeah. Oh, I thought they were doing like a reboot. No. Oh, cool. No. Nice. And well, he's, that's he's, he's an old guy. Okay. Yeah. Right. yeah, he's nice. an old guy. Apparently, he doesn't wear the outfit much at all. Yeah. He said, like, is it, I, I, don't, I don't know what exactly it, it follows his character. I saw a poster whatever. for it, and it's him. I think looking seven, over his winery. <laughs> and I was like, this, be a good this is going to be good. <laughs> Wine making in the oh. future. <laughs> Red or white? <laughs> <laughs> well, I have a um, series on Disney Plus to recommend. Go. If you're into the Disney parks and experiences, it's the Imagineering story. Uh, yeah, my brother-in-law Whoa, that made that good. show. No way. Yeah, he wrote and edited the show. Oh my God. Yeah, yeah. Have Mark you, Catalina. Have, have you seen it? I've seen, we saw the first episode, because we don't have Disney Plus, but we got like the pass or whatever from somebody else, so we've watched the first episode, and it's great, and yeah, we watched it more, because it's, it's all about the history of Disneyland and making all oh, the- Oh, I uh, love that. All, yeah. all the, all the uh, archival footage, and all, it follows them making all the different technologies. I'm coming the, over to your house to watch this. <laughs> well, the first episode is Disneyland, and then it, it goes on to like all of the other parks around like the Epcot world, and plus Disney the cruises, sea. and and I think, I, I only saw the first episode too, but I, I want see the rest i plan to like how some of the parks didn't really succeed right like, right like mm-hmm. um california adventure didn't live up to the expectations oh, and no. uh, the MGM, a huge bomb in the beginning the yeah. mgm studios and some of the overseas parks so uh, yeah oh. it, it's really well done i mean if you're not interested in the subject matter it might yeah, not be for you but if, it goes deep yeah i mean but, but i like yeah. that well yeah, i yeah. love disneyland mm-hmm. yeah. so yeah i'm, I'm there well, cool. how about have you guys seen any episode of the movies that made us 
It's a no. It's the next series from yeah. the people that made the, the toys, toys that, that made it. Yes. So it has. It, I'm trying to remember the films. It features Home Alone, Ghostbusters, Die Hard, and Dirty Dancing. Huh. Wow! Wow! Is, now it doesn't sound like it's all these really great They're films. They're all eighties. Yeah, yeah, but like Home Alone, I've never been a giant fan of that movie. But the episode was great. Why? All these things that I didn't know about that movie. First of all, how much money it made. Oh, it was, God. Yeah. It was, it was yeah. gigantic. Yeah. Yeah. And how little they made it for. Hmm. And okay. that it got canceled at one point. The production got canceled right in the middle. Hmm. And it was with Warner Brothers. And what happened is that they just they needed more money to finish the film. And Warner Brothers said no. Hmm. Like, And it was wow. over like $2 million. Oh. Meanwhile... The people who were involved with making the film knew somebody at 20th Century Fox and they read the script and they were like, oh, this is great. Sure, we'll do it. And so they tell this story of like they're shooting this thing in a school and then they take over the whole school and they build all these sound stages and everything. And so as the guy who is telling everyone they're shutting down the production is going from office to office, there's someone right behind him saying, oh, we're back up again. <laughs> wow. And it's, it's a lot of really great stories. So that's – is it Netflix? Because uh, Toys yes. That Made Us was Netflix. Yes, Okay, yes. so I didn't, I didn't but, know but about this series. A lot of interesting either. stuff about like Joe Pesci and working with him. Cool. And, cool. I want to see the Ghostbusters one too then. Yeah. But yeah. I really I was surprised because I'm not that big of a home yeah. alone guy, but mm-hmm. it was a great story. So now okay. I'm thinking maybe the other ones that yeah. I'm not the biggest diehard fan either, and definitely not a big <laughs> dirty dancing guy. Really? But, but I bet the story's yeah, great. Yeah. 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 Every uh, the story of the production behind every movie has some has yeah, something yeah. to it. Yeah, there's just the drama. Yeah. Right. And I didn't know anything about the fact that like so Warner Brothers had it in their hands. Mm. The genius of a studio. Yeah, and they yeah. let it go and it, and it made like Almost dollars, like $300 yeah. million? Dollars? Yeah, yeah. Well, no, there was, was a lot huge. of hype. As I remember that opening weekend, there was not a lot else that it was up against. And there was so much hype in everybody. I mean, the lines around the block. Yeah. I and saw it just it, it stayed number one for like eight weeks or something like that. Right, yeah. right. Crazy. Cool. Yeah, so that's a good one. And cool. to- Toys That Made Us is a great show. But in this last season, didn't have a lot of subjects. Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles, the history of those toys, not really my thing. Yeah, but it's still, it's still it's, great. I enjoyed it though. <laughs> yeah, I love yeah. how the, I love and how I like, the makers, uh, I like Power Rangers, yeah. the Star, uh, yes. but the previous ones when they did Star Trek because yeah. they featured Marty Abrams yeah, and Mego, yeah, yeah. and right. yeah, they, I'm surprised they didn't do one just on Mego, but the, but uh, they covered the Micronauts. So yeah, it's pretty cool. It's a great show. Um, what about some other stuff that's like not movies, like uh, you know conventions? I think we should mention all the, yeah. the cool conventions we went to last year. I mean, of course, Monster Palooza and Son of, of Monster Palooza. Of course. Comic-Con. I Wonder still Con. enjoy Comic-Con. Yeah, yeah, yeah. me too. Of course. It's Despite classic. its detractors, yeah. I always have a great time. Yep. You know, yep. it's funny. I've, I've met several people uh, recently, actually, who have said, oh, oh I don't like the crowds. I hear that, and, and there's something exciting about the crowds. I mean, there's a, a sense yeah. of excitement, and... I just love that. I, mean, I love that it, feeling. If it was like once a month, yeah, of course. There's no way. It's sure, one, or every week. One, yeah, if, you if had I to had go, to sure. work there, yeah, yeah. and it one, was a weekly job, right. that would be one thing. I mean, but one weekend a year? Yeah. yeah. For three like, days, there's yeah. a throng of people all dressed all, in costumes. All liking the same stuff you like. All like the same stuff yeah. we like. And I just, I'm excited by it. I think it's But because, you know, one of the big, big complaints is it is the biggest thing. It is the biggest convention around, but... A lot of people can't get there, or a lot of people just can't. They try to get in. It is hard, yeah. And it it is hard. So these other conventions have been opening up all across the country. WonderCon. WonderCon. The LA Comic Con. There was, uh, you know, I was listening to the radio the other day, and they said, Wizard World. And and I I used to joke about, ah, Wizard World. But my gosh, Wizard World has become a big thing now. It's a franchise. They do it all over the country. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. There's a Doctor Who convention that I've never, ever been able to even get into. Yeah, because it sells out so fast. Fast. Like within ten minutes, it's always well. in February. Yeah, and, uh, and it's, I know. Yeah, I know it's ridiculous. And I know you're not a giant Doctor Who fan, but it is quite a statement about the lasting effect that yeah. that series has had. Well, let me tell you something about 2020. Ooh. Okay, <laughs> okay. For years, for years, yes, I went ah, poo, Doctor Who, <laughs> poo. you know, but uh, poo, uh, poo, 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 poo. but over years. <laughs> You have created enough interest that I'm curious. Now I have seen the Peter Cushing movie some okay, time let's, ago. Let's push, I'm, I'm, push I'm, that I'm, aside. I'm, I'm just saying. I'm, I'm just saying that I am interested in doing a Doctor Who show because Good. I would like to yeah. 
see if it's going to be something that I would like to go into or if it's a bunch of hooey. If you... <laughs> hooey, nice, <laughs> nice. <laughs> if you started with the reboot, Christopher Eccleston, and you started there, I think you would love it. And I think Kathy would really love it because it goes back to what I think the original series, especially the Tom Baker years, did, is being able to balance horror and comedy. Yeah. Because the Doctor can be, well, Christopher Eccleston is a little more serious, but when you get to David Tennant, he's funny, but then he's deadly serious. Right. And it's almost like, you know, the more threatening the situation is, the funnier he is, mm. and vice versa. Mm -hmm. But not always. I mean, he, you know, they, they mix it up. It's a great show, and if you haven't seen any of those episodes, I envy you, because as much as I like Doctor Who, and I'm enjoying this particular season right now of uh, Jodie Whittaker. It's not bad. I it's, mean, the, It's much uh, better. It's better. I mean, the Christmas episode. I like the two-parter. I thought it was good with Lenny Henry. Yeah, that, that was okay. I like the- um, I thought there was really interesting uh, concepts. I and... like the luxury resort one, too, the, the most recent one. Oh, okay. That was pretty good. They're not blowing me away. They are not? Um, no. And again, this is something with the modern Doctor Who is that what I loved about when I grew up watching like the Tom Baker and the John Pertwee one is that they were mostly like smaller stories. It was character driven. It was character driven. For the most part. Now, you know, Doctor Who is not no longer this like, weird little cult show. Now it's this mainstream show that everybody knows about. And I just think they tried too hard to make them so complex. I just often turn to my wife while I'm watching Doctor Who nowadays like, wait, what, what the fuck's going on? <laughs> you know? Because <laughs> well, I thought this particular <clears throat> season... So far, I think it's a little smarter than the last one. Yeah. My problem with it is the doctor is not written that well. Yeah. Jodie Whittaker, who plays the new doctor. She's the good. First, the first female doctor who. She's great. She's great. She's really good. They, just, they need to flesh out the let, character. They have to let her it's really all very, shine. It's all very surface right yeah, now. Yeah. 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 I agree. But no, I like her a lot. And um, yeah, I mean, it's still a show that I love. I love the character. And you got to give it credit. I mean, it's been going for so long. Yes. And the genius of that show, I mean, I don't know any other TV show or movie where they did this to like, oh, okay, that actor's done. He's going to regenerate into a different actor. But it's the same character, yet different. That's genius. Brilliant. Yeah. And what I do love is the fact that they were able to hold on to the continuity from the earliest shows per, yeah. to now. And, yeah. you know, there are a couple little glitches here and there. But for the most part, it's pretty Yeah, faithful. they do a pretty good job. Yep. Yeah. <clears throat> well, I'm talking about conventions, uh, G-Fest. Yeah. G-Fest, yeah. 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 Love G-Fest. It's, it's, it's so much fun. And Matt and I have gone for the last couple of years, and I'm really hoping we all get to go together. I would love to go. That yeah, would be it's, great. It's not like I'm avoiding to go. I no. just haven't been able to go. Sure. But Kaiju Con, too. A smaller that was convention, fun, yeah. But that yeah. Kaiju, Kaiju Con was in L.A. here. And yeah. A smaller convention, but it was still fun. I did yeah. enjoy it, yes. Yeah. 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 And there should be more Japanese monster conventions. <laughs> <laughs> Tell me about it. Maybe someday we'll have our own. Yeah. There's Ooh. Anime Expo. Anime Expo. Yeah, that's that's true, yeah. yeah. I've yeah. never gone to that. Yeah, now that we've had our anime episode, now I feel like I go. I would <laughs> like to go. Yeah. No, I've I'll bet the costumes I've... are great there. we got we yeah. to call our uh, contact and see if he can get us in. That's yeah. what we got to do. How about, this is definitely, I would say, a worst of 2019, more like just a sad. Um, I would just like comment on some of the uh, celebrity passings of the year because there's yeah. been a lot of horror sci-fi related celebrities. Sid Haig. Yeah. Uh -huh. I mean, Rutger Hauer. Yeah. Larry Cohen. Julie Adams, yeah. Dick Miller, Peter Mayhew. Mayhew, rest in peace. <laughs> uh, <laughs> nice. Sid, Sid, Sid Mead. <laughs> right, right. Um, Peter Fonda. Yeah, you know, Rene Arbrigenois. Yeah. Who, of, who I tried to get on the show. He had a I website know. and I pitched him. I Never heard from him. I know. Neil Pert. The yes. drummer yes. of oh, Rush. Okay, okay. Sorry. And definitely sci fi. Yeah. Okay. No, but definitely, <laughs> have you listened to any Rush? Twenty one twelve. Definitely oh, one of the greatest go. drummers. One ever. of the greatest drummers I mean, ever. You know, moving pictures. I listen. I've, That's such a I, great album. I never such get tired. Red of Barchetta. To. It's yeah. a great little science fiction story. Yeah, and a yeah. kick ass song. Yeah, I know. I, I mean, I I am a fan. I am Albert a fan. Finney. Aww. Yes. Uh, who to me was the best Ebenezer Scrooge? Alice oh, Simpson too. It's true. Yeah. Jan Michael Vincent. Yeah. And uh, Peter Tork. <laughs> Aw, yeah. Yeah. yeah, the monkeys. It's yeah. like the Beatles now. There's only two left. Uh. Isn't it weird? Like, how, like you know, just as you get older, like 
you know, like you always think of certain actors or actresses, like okay, they're older than me, and they, they're never. But they're going to be around. Yeah, forever. they're always going to be like yeah. always going to be the around. The Ramones. I thought the Ramones yeah. were going to be around forever. Yeah, it's just you know, and all of a sudden they just all died. <laughs> Yeah. Except for, you know, it's just so nice to have Marky still around. Yeah, yeah. Mm-hmm. That's that's the one thing that is so great about going to some of these conventions, going to see some of these people that were in some of these films or rock yeah. bands or, or, or whatnot. And years ago, we had a lovely moment with uh, Julie Adams, and yeah. she gave us a shout-out, and she was lovely, and it yeah. was a wonderful moment. I mean, George just- Romero... Who oh, we had yes. a great interaction yes. with. And so what I wanted to say to listeners is if you haven't gone to one of these either autograph shows or these cons, you know, you should try to get out and go to one of these. You never know who you're gonna find. Sometimes you can find out a list of people who are gonna go, but you know, you just don't get these chances very often. And you know, sometimes you have the chances like Peter Mayhew would have a booth at the back of Comic Con every year. Every year, yeah. just yeah. be sitting there, and there'd be no action at his booth. It was a little sad. And I did. I wasn't. <laughs> <laughs> I wasn't compelled to get his autograph, or I never met him. But it's like I could have gone up and said something. Well, it was weird too because I would see him go. Oh, he's there. I know he'll be there next year. Right, you know, it's yeah, just right, one right. of those things, yeah, and you just don't realize. You, know, just, yeah. you just never really know. Yeah, I look at my cats. They're getting up there. And I, I can't imagine life without them now. And it's just, I don't know what I'm going to do. I know. Yeah. I feel the same way about my dog. Yeah. You know, we're also, sometimes I think about this. You know, we, we live in a culture that has celebrities and all these artists that we're exposed to all of our lives. We follow them. We follow their careers. And their careers and their output mean something to us. But I think, you know, hundreds of years ago, people only lived in their little villages. And if someone died, it's like, well, everybody knew them and it was a little community. Now, it's like every few weeks, you hear that someone died, maybe that meant something to you, and you feel this ping. You know, yeah. the human yeah. race has evolved at this point where we have to deal with all of these deaths. And even though they're celebrities and people we don't know, it still can't help but affect you, you know? Yeah, yeah. But that's one thing about Monster Party that's great, is that think of all the amazing talented people we've got on this show as guests yeah I mean, right that we would never have met man you know or be able to sit sure, and hang yeah. out with and talk with if we didn't yeah. do this podcast you know so yeah. true yeah so well that's great sean <laughs> <laughs> yeah i don't want to be a debbie down thanks, thanks, to, thanks no, for being I want, I want to yeah. I want what to else is dying yeah. sean <laughs> yeah. uh, the earth the earth yeah, yeah. well that was great <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Well, you know, this this was a fun episode. Maybe we can make it an annual thing. That could be too, yeah. I like it. Absolutely. I like it. More Monster Party traditions. Yes. Yeah. It's our Christmas. That's right. And New Year's. Or New Year's. Combined. You pick a holiday. <laughs> I'm not going to force one on you. It's, it's Kwanzaa. It's whatever a, you it's need. A, it's our Groundhog Day. Yeah. <laughs> so do we want to do a lightning round? Let's do that. Yeah. All right. All right. Okay, give me one. Our friend David Weiner's documentary, In Search of Darkness. Uh, that was on my that list. I was going to bring too. it up yes. next. Yes. As a best yes. or worst? Best. Yes. Yes. Well, I, I, I was going to say I best. Try. I didn't know if he was going to give a criticism. It's, it's, it's not only a, a fantastic movie, it's a wonderful experience. You, yes. You sit, you sit through hours of these mini documentaries and all these horror films from the 80s, and there's so much insight and interviews and facts and you really do come away with all of this information from all these movies that we remember seeing, for me, most of the time in a theater. So yeah, it's true. fully recommend you, you buy this movie in search of darkness. Four hours, yeah. and it flies by. Yeah. Of 80s horror goodness. Yeah. Sean? Uh, okay, I'd like to throw out uh, this movie that definitely not for all tastes, but I did enjoy it, called The Lighthouse. Ooh. Oh, yeah. I love that. <laughs> yeah, I thought it was uh, I great did too. Um, um, Robert Pattinson and William Defoe, it's just them on a <laughs> in a fucking lighthouse on an island, Sounds driving great. each other crazy, and it's, it's so hot. so bizarre <laughs> and so weird. It's by the director of The Witch. Yeah, and it kind of has a little bit of that kind of yeah. vibe, which I liked. Like, I like, love the way it's, yeah. it's all done in beautiful black and white. It's not for everybody. My wife didn't care for it, but uh, it's harder to really describe. It's the best way to say it is like you just watch two people or one person in particular going mad. Two guys it's, it's just working in a lighthouse, yeah, and it was dreary, like depressing. Yeah. job, and they're stuck with each other. They don't isolated. Even, they don't really like each other that no, much. No, but they have to endure each other. Yeah, and, and two we, guys we, we so the, share a lighthouse without driving each other crazy. <laughs> yeah, pretty much. Pretty much, yeah. The odd lighthouse. 
house. Yeah. <laughs> Will- Willem Dafoe is great. I mean, talk about the perfect crusty old lighthouse guy. Yeah, uh, it's so good. And uh, they're both really great. Yeah, no, they're that. both. Re- yeah, and, Robert Pattinson is too. And you really feel like you're watching two people lose their minds. Yes. Yeah. There, there's imagery in there that is just so bizarre and uh, and arresting. It's like it's a good movie to watch at home. It's not, I don't know if you've seen a theater maybe, but like it's not for all tastes. But man, it's a good film. Creepy horror. Okay. Yes, yeah. All right, and I know I've mentioned this on another show before, but also from HBO, Chernobyl, the miniseries. Oh, yeah, that's one I haven't haven't seen. Unbelievable, created and written by uh, Craig Mazin, and it's unbelievable, and talk about a horror story. I had no idea about what happened in, in Russia when they had the nuclear accident, all the terrible stuff that happened, and how horrifying it is, what it did to all the people who were there trying to put out this fire and 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 how they had to like fix it or or like take care of it is unprecedented uh, mm-hmm. building this structure and digging underneath it's unbelievable it was great great series Gripping. totally and then uh, that's something I loved. And also another thing I loved, which is a little bit more lighthearted, I know you guys didn't love, but that would be Captain Marvel. And that's with Brie Larson, directed by Anna Bowden and Ryan Fleck. I mean, I, I love the film. I love that there's a moment in there about, you know, if you get knocked down, get back up, get back up. And I, and I love that. So I know you guys aren't big fans, but I really enjoyed it. Okay. All right. Okay. All right. Well, I've got a movie that, well, it says it's a 2018 one. But it was released in North America in 2019. Okay, okay. so I'll that, buy that. Okay, I'm fine. With let that. me go with that one. Okay. I am. It's a movie called Freaks, and so there's this seven year old girl who has to live in this house, and she's never allowed to go outside. Her father makes sure that all the windows are covered up so no mm-hmm. one can see inside, mm-hmm. and she is just not allowed to go out any place. Mm-hmm. And there are some weird things going on with her. Like, we don't really know exactly what happened to her mother, mm-hmm. but she keeps seeing her mother in this room that she sleeps in, and sometimes she'll see this little girl who lives down the street, and there's a scene where there's this ice cream truck that keeps pulling up. Mm-hmm. And at one point, the little girl across the street is there and the little girl was watching her from the window and it's like, I want an ice cream cone. I want one. And all of a sudden the little girl who's getting the ice cream cone turns around and looks at her and brings her an ice cream cone. Mm. And the father is aware of it. It's like, how did this little girl even know you? You're not supposed to interact with anybody Mm -hmm. because it's dangerous. And, but you don't know what's happening. Mm -hmm. And, it's so good. It's a mystery that unravels. Bruce Dern is the ice cream guy. <laughs> oh. <laughs> of course wow. he is. <laughs> and it is terrific. It oh. is one of these movies where you have no idea what's going on, and it just unravels. Hmm. And by okay. the time you figure out what is going on, it's delightful. Hmm. It reminds me a little bit of a movie you recommended to us, actually, which I saw same also this year, I Am Mother. Yeah. Which I which I saw. Yeah, that was actually pretty neat. Also, kind of. Like I am mother is genius. Yeah, yeah. that's well, one of the I, best I really science fiction movies I've seen in recent years. Yeah, that's really good. That one's terrific. There's also a show called Pennyworth. Oh, oh yeah, how is that? It is it's, on it's, Epic. It's Alfred the Butler. It's about Alfred. Yeah, and it takes place in an alternate England. The 50s and 60s are kind of mixed up a little bit, Mm -hmm. and there's some strange things like there's televised public executions. Mm -hmm. So Alfred is this former British soldier who now owns his own security company, and he gets on the radar of Bruce Wayne, who wants to hire him, and they have to deal with there is this organization that is trying to overthrow the government. And Alfred is this badass fighter, you know, <laughs> almost like a, a James Bond-esque oh. superhero. Uh-huh. And it's so much fun. They do a great job in creating a sense of groovy 60s style. That's fun. It's got a little bit of Get Carter wow. vibe mm. to it. Mm. Love Get Carter. And uh, just acted really well. Is it fun? Like, does it involve other of the DC characters like, well, the Waynes okay. so far yeah, at right. this point. But there's some great villains that are genuinely creepy and keep showing up and a good cast. Uh, you got John Bannon as Alfred Pennyworth, Ben Aldridge as Thomas Wayne, and a whole bunch of cameos, including Simon Day from The Fast Show. Oh, wow. He's the guy hmm. who's, someone sitting there, mate. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> wow, cool. Okay. So that's a great show. And you don't hear a lot about it. 
Mm -hmm. But uh, Jason Lindsay invited me to the premiere of it. It was a special screening. And we saw the first two episodes, and I loved it. I haven't seen the rest of them, but from what I saw, it was two hours that flew by. That's cool. Interesting. Jason Jason Lindsay, the president of Biff Bang Pow. That is correct. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Wow. Look at you. (laughs) Look at me. Look at me. I'm as helpless as a... No, 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 no. no, no, no. <laughs> yeah. That actually sounds really neat, man. Is it, is it based on like a, a graphic novel or anything, comic book uh, series? Not that I'm aware of. Okay. But I'm just curious. It's, it's, I don't know how it's doing. Right, but right. It's, it's nice that DC is kind of going in the right direction now. Taking well, some chances. They're going in yeah. interesting direction. Yeah. 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 Like, yeah. 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 Because I, I will say this. I want them to succeed. You know, I'm a fan. You know, I want them to, to put the money into sure. this well, like, and to yeah. go all out. Yeah. I don't want them to, oh, I, they're Batman or Aquaman, you know. That's I, the thing. I, I'd rather see, like, another Joker than, like, another Aquaman movie, you know? No. Like, well, like, I didn't yeah. mind you know, like, not, No, I, like I didn't Joker. hate Aquaman, but, like, it's whatever. It's, like, okay, it's, like the, so the, disposable, though. The next Wonder Woman might be fun. It looks kind of cool. That does look good. Yeah, it looks kind of cool. It takes place in the 80s. Yes. Yeah, yeah, that's a great look, decade. Yeah. It did look fun. Yeah, it did. Yeah. It did. Well, well, this was fun. Yeah, it was. Yeah. It was. 2019 <laughs> was pretty interesting. But it you was, know what? Like There's going to be a lot of cool things in 2020. That's right. You know, so I can't wait. Well, we're here already. Well, let's raise a toast to 2019. A yeah, great year yeah, for movies. Yeah, yeah. yeah. oh, hopefully, it gets better. <laughs> <laughs> and we're still alive. Woo. And here's to 2020. Yeah. That's Yay. Right. Time for a listener shout out. Shout out. Shout out, shout out, I am robot, shout out. <laughs> shout out. Well, I've got a couple shout outs that I'd hey, like to share. Hey, yeah. more shout outs. Yeah. First of all, I would like to thank frequent guest and good friend of ours, Sue Murphy. Oh, Sue Murphy! Sue Murphy. Sue. Yeah, we love Sue. Star Trek fan. She is, She's yes. my buddy. She's great. And Sue donated to us. A lovely bottle of vodka, <gasps> and it's nice. ten forward vodka. It is Star Trek no. themed vodka, nice. wow. and it's got a great bottle that has kind of a display that oh. you would see on the Next Generation on one of the walls. That is so cool! So yeah. cool. And, uh, Let's open yeah, it up. It's really great. <laughs> uh, <laughs> we're gonna save this for a special occasion, okay, oh. okay. like tomorrow. <laughs> so or we may, will we will open it up. I'll have a special occasion <laughs> later on tonight. But thank you, Sue. Thanks, Sue. Thanks, yeah. it's very much appreciated. I would also like to plug something for another frequent guest, friend of the show, friend of mine, the lovely and talented Josh Gilliland. Josh oh, Gilliland. Gosh. Oh, Mr. Legal Geeks. That's yeah. right. Now, Josh, aside from doing the Legal Geeks blog and podcast and all his live shows he is also an author (gasps) and he has a book that he has contributed to and the book is called unlock stories 10 stories one phone Mm. yeah and so the stories are all about well let me just read you the blurb that amazon has okay you find a phone on a diner counter or left on a city bus or abandoned in a gutter what would you do try to find the owner sell it online See if it holds any secrets. The last thing you should do is launch a strange app. These are the unlocked stories where a mysterious phone is found and lost and found again, gravitating from person to person, tempting them, compelling them, and changing their lives forever. The stories turn from suspenseful to absurd, heartfelt to noir, horrifying to redemptive. Once you find the phone, you never know what you will unlock. Sounds great, right? Wow. So Josh has a great story in it. And aside from Josh, the other authors, we should plug them too, I think. Anita Dime, Tom Wang, uh, of course, Joshua Gilliland, R.W. Hubel, R.J. Newmanen, David Gary Perinelli, Christina Romero, Anthony Stevens, Thomas Throop, and John Tracy. Mm. And this is a book that you can get on Amazon $15.99 Fifteen ninety nine paperback. It's good price. Yeah, nine ninety nine on Kindle. Nice. It makes a great gift. It makes a great gift for you. And who doesn't like to read? Yeah, good right. anthology. Almost yeah. all of America. <laughs> <laughs> but nice. Josh, congratulations yeah, on the congrats. book. Yeah, and uh, I know it's going to do great. Oh, and one more plug. Friend of the show, filmmaker Roger Nygaard, who brought us the classic documentary Trekkies, has big news. His recent film, The Truth About Marriage, will drop on Valentine's Day, February 14th, 2020, along with a companion book. 
For more info, just go to thetruthaboutmarriage.com. So a few episodes ago, we were talking about certain items that we recalled a while back. One of them was the candy Pop Rocks. You yes. guys remember yeah. Pop yeah. Rocks? Oh, yeah, okay. Yeah. Well, would you guys believe that Pop Rocks are really hard to find? Really? Mm-hmm. Yeah, yeah. I because I I got so excited after we we talked about it. So I wanted to get us some pop rocks, and I looked and I looked. I couldn't find them. Eventually, I found them at Rocket Fizz. Oh yeah. Oh and, yeah. I love, and I love that place. I bought some. Hey. Hey. Oh. Because I, if you guys recall, I was afraid of these as a kid because I thought my head would explode, <laughs> and so I brought some for you guys to try. And oh. and you can you can on a cherry. Now I'm on a no carb diet. Because, yeah, I'm that guy. Okay. But I'm going to do a little bit. I'm going to do I a little will, taste. Absolutely. All I'm we gonna, need is one. Okay. I'm yeah. going gonna, gonna, gonna okay. to dust okay. my uh, uh, gums put, put, with okay. it a little but bit. But put your yeah. mouth close to the... Yeah, yeah. Close to so, the so I, I don't you, know if you're going to hear so it. So here's the thing. So I was really afraid that these would make my head explode. And so just recently when I got these, I wanted to share them with you. You know, we could we could do this together, you know? Yeah. And, wow. And Did you test these on the dog together. first? <laughs> no, no, no. But but I, I tried them and I and I was waiting for, you know, my ex- ex- explosion, but... All right, so open the bag. I have to do this. Um, and now, it sounds like uh, my mouth is exploding. <laughs> Can you hear that? Yeah. <laughs> now, what's cool is it's cool. Pop Rocks ah. were actually designed. <laughs> Ouch. Do <laughs> you feel like your head exploding? No, it's like. It's like Destroying the insides of your mouth. Yeah. Uh, but in a fun way. Yeah. 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 These were actually made, they, they were trying to think of a way to make like a, a, um, a soda. Where you add them in soda. And someone actually got some in their mouth and went, hey, ah, ah. <laughs> <laughs> that, what, this would make a great candy. It's, ah. good, it's good though. You know what? Oh. I so want a blowjob with these. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Well, You're uh, right. But the funny thing is, when I tried it, I remember thinking to myself, where's the big explosion? I mean, you can feel no, them. It's, it's more just like a, a snap, crackle, pop. Yeah, did yeah. you ever have them in the day? Yes. Yes, I did. So there was never an explosion. It was exactly what yeah, we just, just experienced. Like this, which yeah. is, it's just cool. They would crackle That's on like, your tongue. But as a little kid, this is like yeah. terribly exciting. You yeah. Know? Yeah. yeah. No, this is, I still, I enjoy this. Oh well, I, I like I, the package. I put them in everything. I put them in my ass, my nose, yeah. my <laughs> See, everything. You know, if you put them in your ass, I and mean, then your your ass will start to like, you know, <laughs> it'll, uh, it'll have like little bubbly poppy things and coming that, out. Of and here. that's a bad thing. Yeah. <laughs> what? what, Sean? What's with you? <laughs> hey, open yourself up to new experiences. <laughs> you see, you never know. I, see, I thought I thought maybe this would get you guys off the thing. Hey, let's get Larry on reefer. I figured, hey, let's all share <laughs> pop rocks together. Ooh, actually, and we, this and a reefer oh, together. No, yeah. no, no, no reefer. No. <laughs> <laughs> Like smoking a joint with seeds. <laughs> Pop yeah. reefer. Well, I thought you Thank guys you, would enjoy Larry. this. Cool. I, I like thought that. it was. I enjoyed. It. Thank you very much Thank for you, bringing Larry. these. Yeah. And yeah. and uh, you know, again, these are they're hard to find. Well, I like this. Is it says like retro packaging from the seventies. So yeah. it's like they brought them back. That's cool. Yeah. 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 No, it's, and so if you do, do not eat, <laughs> <laughs> it's made with pro- processed with carbon dioxide. There you go. There you go. I which think is, that's a secret. For you. Yeah. <laughs> Good. Oh, if Peter Bick were here now, <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, really. he'd be trying to carbon capture us. Yeah. All right, that's awesome. Well, there you go. Cool. Nice. Very nice. Thank you, Larry. Yeah. And let's remind our listeners that you can find us on Facebook and YouTube at Monster Party TV. Our Twitter is at Monster Party HQ. Instagram is also Monster Party HQ. If you're listening to us on iTunes or whatever. <laughs> Whatever platform you're listening to us on, if you take a moment and write a review, (laughs) we will read it on the air, Pop Rocks or no. (laughs) Larry, you're blowing yourself. (laughs) (laughs) On that note, I am Matt Weinhold. I'm Sean Sheridan. I'm Larry Stroth. And I'm James Gonis. Keep America strong! And listeners, please give us your own best and worst of 2019. Because whatever they are, we'll disagree with them. Oh no. I got Larry's head is about to explode. Ah! Ah! 
Well, that's one problem solved. Speaking of your mics. Test, test. <clears throat> hello, hello. Test, test. Test. Oh, my, my headphones are, I don't want, I'm, well, I can use these. Let me see. Am I wearing your headphones? No, 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 don't worry about it. I, actually, I want to. Test, test. Ooh, or something. This is what I want to say. Test, yes. I just want. Wait, wait. Oh. <laughs> wow. Damn. I will say this. <laughs> <laughs> it means he wants to hear my story. And that's touching. <laughs> Normally be like, so here's a... <laughs> <laughs> All right, tell your stupid story. <laughs> see, mm. see, okay. Now, just about the Cabbage Patch kid. Here's the thing that really irritates me, because if you think about it... Now, this is a kid... Yes. That when you worked at Toys R Us, yes. you were in charge, you were in the like ship the warehouse area. Yeah, the right? warehouse and and back in the early days, because what used to happen if if they put the cabbage patch dolls out, people got into fights. Right. It was people hor- were crazy for so, those things. It's crazy. And, and it sounds weird today, but this actually happened. So Toys R Us had a policy. What they did is the way they <clears throat> did it is you had to go if you wanted a cabbage patch doll, you had to take this little piece of paper, like you, you would go to your uh, grocer and you want to get some meat and you pull out a number. Well, they had the same type of thing, but you had to fill out this little form. And they told you, okay, you can come back for your Cabbage Patch doll this time and uh, or this date on this time. They would make you an arrangement. Right. And you'd come, and then what you I was supposed to do is they go, okay, Larry, we need a blonde-haired girl. I I just go grab. <laughs> Who doesn't? <laughs> <laughs> All right, we can start I, now. No, I grab. I, I I just walk down the line. Oh, here's a blonde girl, cabbage patch doll, and I just throw her down the chute, and the it, the doll will go down the chute. And then you're the kid would if be only staying real there. life were like that. <laughs> the kid would be staying there, and then oh, here's this cabbage patch doll, and they would and almost all the time. The kid, when it came down the chute, I could hear the kid go, oh, I love it, oh, it's great. But this yeah. one time, this one time, this girl didn't like the little blonde girl that I sent down to her. And the thing that bugs me is all the little Cabbage Patch kids, they all had kind of like, you know, they looked a little funky or a little weird because they were all special. You know, mm. they were unique little kids. And so to me, it was like, you don't like this little child I just sent down to you? You can't just throw your child back. It's because you don't like what it looks like. Okay, the, at the beginning of the story, I was almost siding with you, <laughs> but I think I'm back to the little girl. It was a cute little. It was a cute little doll. She didn't want that one. She wanted what a brunette or something. No, no, she wanted a blonde one, but she didn't like the one. She didn't like its nose or something. Well, you know, so I feel bad for all the big do, nose. Do they dolls. have? Do they have different noses? Yeah, they, the cabbage patch ones. Yeah, where, where have you been? I've no, I've been do, out do, do, with do, people, do, do, and do, I, I, I have you. I never haven't seen, been at the Cabbage Patch doll ha, convention. Have you never seen a Cabbage Patch doll? They're all kind of different. I did my best to avoid it. <laughs> okay, you, you're missing out. Some people am I. Some people would consider it pro-choice. What that little girl was exercising. Ah, there oh, you go. oh, really? Yes. Oh, but it wasn't. It had come down the chute already. You can't <laughs> kick it back <laughs> and toss it in the trash well, because orphans, <laughs> cabbage patch orphans. No, but that, that would have been a good line. The ones that were thrown back. Oh my gosh! Well, I like so, that one. So the thing is, is you know, the the mom and the daughter left. And they came back. They called the manager. They wow. did, and and the manager, bless him. I think I, I mentioned he was a really nice guy. He was a really good guy, and what he did. But they did go into my area. I didn't like that. He actually I don't know what brought. That means. It. Well, what he did is no one's allowed upstairs in the storage area where I was. No one, Matt. Okay. I had that storage area all to myself. All the Coleco ride to along toys and all the special the, the dolls and stuff. Anything that you had to push down the chute. You was- ring the bell. <laughs> <laughs> well, the thing that gets me is they came the next day. She came the next day and Frank, the manager, actually brought the little girl and her mother up the stairs to my area. And you know what I did? 
Nothing. <laughs> I hid. <laughs> I kind of nothing. Went, <laughs> no, I, I went down the, uh, the, al- the, the alley. The, uh, the alley. alley. <laughs> the alley. <laughs> and I hid, Hiding in the alley. I hid behind, I don't know, what was it sit and spin or something? You know, I was like. <laughs> just sitting and spinning. <laughs> no, in, was, with rage. No, just, I was. And understand, look, I was, what, 16 or, you know, at the time. And, and I felt like this. How dare you, you know, not like it's the doll. I, yes, you know yes. what? This is the thing that confounds me. The fact that, of all people, you should be into punk rock because of the level of anger that you carry around with you, I would think that that would it would be a natural, don't you think? Yeah. See, I'm not that angry. You are. No, no, yes, they, you to are. like slam people dancing, you know, and the smoking cigarettes. Is, that's not me. Well, you can do it the way you want. You don't have to. They don't pass out cigarettes at the door. <laughs> well, no, it probably costs money. They don't, you know, the punk guys don't okay. have money, you know. Oh, God. <laughs> All right, I'm well, going home. Oh, I am home. <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> Fuck this. I just, you brought it up, Cabbage Patch Kids, so. Well, you know. But you know what? I've moved on. Good. Uh. <laughs> That's a lie. <laughs> no, no, Matt, I have. Well, I, but uh, but the funny thing is- have not moved on with anything. <laughs> what, what's interesting, though, is I still remember what that kid looked like. I of mean, course you do. I do. You seem to remember this whole thing vividly. And, and the funny thing is, I wonder where she is now. I, well, she probably beats her kids or something, you know, and probably says, <laughs> or she probably says, ah, I didn't want you or something like that. <laughs> oh, 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 you know, probably. She's yeah, probably she's horrible. commenting on she's every Every one of her kids has a nose job. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I don't know. Maybe not. I don't, maybe, maybe you know what? Maybe, maybe she learned a valuable lesson. Maybe when she got home with the new one, she thought, you know what? I'm thinking back to that one I gave away. And I don't think so. Was, I think the lesson she learned was make a scene and you'll get what you want. Hmm. Right. What, what can we learn from this? Uh, it's worked for me. But you see, that's just years. it. No, it doesn't always work. Well, it doesn't always work, but no, it works a lot. No, like when you make your scene. <laughs> I mean, if you were to make a scene here, we would go, no, Matt, that's not what we're going to do. We'd well, put that's you- true. But I think depending on the person and the situation, a good scene can help. Now, there are some times when, you know, how, like if two people are arguing, the one who's yelling is the one that everyone thinks is a lunatic, even mm. if they're right. Right. And so sometimes you have to be that guy. Like, We've talked about this before, but like customer service, when you call up yes. the customer service line yes. and uh, Carrie, my lovely wife, mm-hmm. gets immediately irritated, like can't handle it. Like, mm-hmm. how dare they? You're just, you know, you're terrible at your job. And Well, Whoa. they may be, but mm-hmm. maybe they don't like their job. Yeah. And uh, maybe this is the hundredth call where someone yelled at them and yeah. you don't know the whole situation. And I've learned through many situations – you know, make make a friend, make an ally. Like unemployment once, I had to call unemployment, and the woman I got was just you immediately could tell like she's had a bad day. Yeah, and I started talking. I was like, really, like, hey, anything you could do to help me in this situation, and everything changed. Well, it's like oh. you you get more flies with honey than vinegar. You know, there, that that's thing. true. Yeah. So, but then if that all fails, make a scene. Yeah. So, are you saying that I should have made a big scene? <laughs> no, you <laughs> should. At you, Toys R Us, no, I've no, been made a big are, stink to my manager and go, no, I don't want to give her that toy. I, she doesn't deserve I, it. I'm not I, saying that at that's all. That's not the policy. I think he's missed the entire point <laughs> of this, which is that she made the scene in yes. her situation. And yes, she, she got did. what she wanted. Yeah, but you know, it's looking back, you know, maybe I got to cut her some slack because it's not like she yelled and screamed or anything. She was... Uh, <laughs> I was I was once at the end of the line to get stuff signed by Sam Raimi at the Shrine Auditorium. And we're going through the line and it's almost down to maybe like 12 people. And, you know, one of these guys who's now all pumped up with power because he's working security at the comic book convention. He's like, oh, uh, I think that we're going to cut off the line here. And I'm like, what? I've been standing here for an hour. And oh, no, no, that's the way it goes. I look up at Sam Raimi and I go, Sam, come on. And he just turned to me and goes, oh, no, everyone's getting their autograph. Everyone's, we're not cutting this thing off. As long, and, as, long uh, as you're already in line. Yeah. yeah. And uh, and I just said, Sam, you're the best. And he <laughs> yelled back, there's no one better. <laughs> cool. Yeah. Class act that man. All right. Mm. 
Should we start this <clears throat> ridiculous thing? Let's do it. What are we calling <clears throat> just the best what, and worst of Best and worst of 2019? Mm-hmm. <clears throat> I like it. Works for me. Yes. Now, also Fine. within this, I'm going to play around a little bit with the best and worst because I'm going to have some subdivisions, which are one of them I think is like uh, not terrible, but not great. Or just really disappointing. Right. Yeah. It could be that. Like, yeah. and, and qualify any of these yeah, things. Yeah. 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 I'm, as long I'm, as we're talking about it. I'm yeah. hip. Yep. You're hip. <laughs> yeah. I mean, Take back everything I said <laughs> about the whole punk rock thing. <laughs> I think a title like Best and Worst is good just because it, it's simple and you sort of get the idea and it hints at debate. Yeah, because I'm not I'm not talking just about movies too. I have like events and conventions. <gasps> and toys. Oh, good. oh. Yeah. I thought it was like anything. This it, it, can, it can be anything. Yeah. See, yeah. Toys. That's, that's why I didn't you, even think about it. That's what you go above and beyond what is required <laughs> here at Monster Party. You know, for me, I'm that C plus B minus student. You're the A, <laughs> and I was up till six in the morning. Now, yeah, every oh, time, every oh. time I get, we get your emails, it's like, oh, uh, the show's I'm, up. It's like, wait a minute, it's 5.30 in the morning. I'm going to bed. Yeah. Yeah. Jazz hours. And, so, and I'm, I'm well, reading this at 6.30 in the morning. I just got up. <laughs> yeah. yeah. No, I was working on that thing from like 10 in the morning till then. How are we ever going to do Japan again now? I mean, our days are completely messed up now. What do you mean? Well, now it's like, you, you know, I'm asleep when you're awake. Well, I can I'm change. Awake. I mean, I can adjust can my- Can you? Yeah. Can you? Yeah, when I get jobs, I wake up and go. Really? Yeah. You you're, work with me. You're, I can't say you're there at nine, you know, well, right, have, on the, right on the nose. I didn't have to be there at nine. No, but, you know, it might have been nice for you to be there. Hey, I'm ready Why? to go at nine. Hey. Nine. Why? Because hey. that's when the day hey. starts. That's when your day starts. <laughs> that's not when my day starts. <laughs> when does your day start? It's, it's nine o'clock, Ten-ish. by the way. We have to do this. Okay. Okay, here we go. You are a hard worker. I was a hard worker, and I was there later than anybody. Yes, you were. See? It's just when I like to pick my work And, and not time. only were you a hard worker, one of the best workers. Oh, Most you. creative genius. Climb in my lap. Before, I'm serious. Before Sean. Some of those other comedians. <laughs> some of those other comedians. Crap. You're, you're Matt good. Weinhold. And it, and it kept going. See? It kept going. And this is how the show stays together. See? We turn yeah. on each other, and then right back in each other's <laughs> arms. Right. The glue. Okay. It's a vicious circle. <laughs> wow, boy, you. We've already we've lost, we've lost Sean for good, man. He's done. Okay, here we go. Let's do it then. All right. Moment of silence. What? And at the end, we should do a we'll do a selfie video thing. Yes. 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 Okay. Quick question. Jesus weird, Christ! Weird You're the guy who wants to start the fucking show. <laughs> do you have like any like? Plastic or uh, numbers? I have plastic and numbers. What are you? What are you talking Not about? Numbers. Well, it would be great if we for the video tees, like you have a two, I have a zero, <gasps> oh. you, have one, you have a nine. Well, who, the f- who the fuck do you candles. think I am? <laughs> candles. You know, don't you have the like, candles? You know, like they're yeah, 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 no, sure. Yeah, I've got a whole fucking Happy New Year kit that I keep in the. <laughs> oh, do okay. you? No, yeah. I don't. <laughs> <laughs> send out, send out somebody to go get something. And, okay, I forgot. Right, that's the no, that's what, that's, that's next like, year. Yeah, okay. yeah, that's after all the riches from Patreon come in. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, and and just really quick, send out our number guy. You say riches, it's like <laughs> it's not necessarily riches. It's it's I think it's we've earned this. And and if you like us. You know, you you it's peanuts, 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 peanuts. every month <laughs> to have quality. Will, if we can afford peanuts, if somebody I could will send us happy. peanuts, it'd be awesome. Yeah. yeah. No, don't send honey us roasted. peanuts. I love. Peanuts. I like the honey roasted. Yeah, I prefer cashews. Though. All right. All right. I can, you know, I need a barrel of cashews in one can, sitting. Aren't they like the caviar of nuts? They are. I think so. Must you peanuts take... are lower carb though? I'm sure they are. Yeah. <clears throat> yeah, that's true. yeah. For, for what it's worth. But cashews, come on, right? Oh, yummy. Is that your favorite? What's your favorite nut? Before we start this. It really, really it is. is yeah. really. I, li- I like cashews, but I, and I like are, all nuts, but I, I do too. Cashews are, yeah. yeah, yeah. I don't like those. You know those? Like when you get mixed nuts, there's that one big filberts. Is that what it is? Filberts. Who the fuck eats filberts? I don't like those. When they're I was terrible. a kid, that was my favorite. When I was a what? kid, I don't, I don't know why. Yeah. I just. I mean, they're not terrible. I mean, they taste like a nut, they're but they're weird. not. They're like the misfit they, nuts. They kind of have no real flavor. No flavor. No. No. Yeah. It's the no. it's the zeppo of nuts. It's a loser. It's a loser. I like that. No, that's that's Sean's thing. He's old. Oh, it's the zeppo. Sean Standard, the Curly like, Joe Dorita, exactly. <laughs> no, it's the Joe Besser. It's the, it's, it's the Ted <laughs> Healy. <laughs> Wait, Ted, is there any Jesus Christ superstar? No, <laughs> no, that's it's Ted Neely, right? Ted Neely from 
Jesus, Jesus Christ, Christ Superstar. Oh, yeah. Ted oh, Healy was, we should just the, cancel was the, show. the fourth Stooge. The be- <laughs> oh, in the early <laughs> the beginnings Healy. of the Stooges, they had a fourth guy who like should be their boss. He was kind of. he I'm was the sorry. main guy. He I'm was sorry. It was Ted Healy and his Stooges. <clears throat> That's wow. in the early days. Yeah. Yeah. And he was an asshole and they realized yeah. we didn't need him. Right. And uh, you know, and history was made. All right. Okay, well, let's go. Speaking of history, let's make some history. Let's make some history. This is the one, yeah. Okay. Who needs a guest? <laughs> <laughs> I think we've just proven that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, here we go. The best and worst okay. of 2019. God, I'm going to kill all of you. <laughs> the best oh, and worst. Jesus oh, Christ. <laughs> so make sure you say the or the. <laughs> well, that, you're, are you I just going to go best? Be- the topic is the best, best and, and worst. You want? I'll throw in a the to make you happy. I don't care. <laughs> well, it's, I'll go, it's, I'll, I'll it's, go it's, get my letters. <laughs> they're, they're stored with my numbers. <laughs> <laughs> Good Lord. <laughs> okay. Okay, the best. Any other <laughs> grammatical He's changes? The best. To, no, but it, it sounds good. The best. What font are you looking for? No, it, we... it doesn't. No, no font. I've written it down. I'm ready. You've written it down. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> written the down. And I want to make sure I know what and it's Sean called. And Sean and I are the guys that smoke pot. Well, James a little bit too, but. Uh, all right, wow. let's go. Okay. I have something after the show. It's going to blow you away. Right. Is it fast? All right. It's fast and loose. It's okay. gonna, we're going to go a little crazy. Ooh, but I'll right. save it for the okay. end of the show. Okay, let's go. Let's go. Here we go. Greetings, everyone. Wait a minute. Before I start that, I want to close this door because I'm getting a little uh, soundy sounds. Get a little verklempt. Get a little <laughs> little sound, little audio. Get a and little it gets air. Too warm or anything? No, I'm not a little chilly. I'm a little chilly. Anyway, so. I got a chill. You got chills. Wow. <laughs> you guys are a bunch of old ladies. <laughs> you have a blanket? I do. I do. I have a shawl. <laughs> yeah. Uh-huh. All right. How she you have you padding for the seat because I'm a little yeah uh-huh. out of state. Perfectly <laughs> Do you want your suited? oxygen tank? <laughs> I won't even touch this fly. Yeah, <laughs> who wants a fresh catheter? <laughs> oh, oh. okay. There's a lot of catheter commercials on that. I know. TV. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Many. I, I, on me TV. Isn't yeah. it funny? It's all the shows we year old. watch. Yeah, it's ninety year olds who <laughs> yeah. watch that show, yeah. that channel. That and, just like, and reverse mortgages. Yeah. Every day I wake up, it's hey, like honey, a day without a catheter. Hey, honey, I'm like, heart yeah. To, heart to heart, Sean again. <laughs> <laughs> And that's what you and I do. <laughs> so I, you know, that's Stephanie Power. She was something else, though. She was Are you goofy. kidding? Oh, she still. She was a terrific I, broad. I swear. <laughs> like a couple years ago, she, just, she was at the um, Hollywood Book, book and. What the fuck Hollywood is it called? Collector's yeah, Hollywood Collector. She's stunning. Wow. She's yeah. amazing. Good oh. for her. Oh, my God. Yeah. We got to get her on the show. She, yeah. Yeah. I don't know if she's done much science fiction, fantasy, and horror, but. Girl from Uncle? She has, actually. Herbie she's writes again. Sure. Yeah. You know what? I was going through some. Videos, some punk videos on top of the pops in England, and Blondie came on, which is not really punk, but and my God, oh, I forgot how Deborah Harry ridiculously insane gorgeous, insane, and like, hot. and she's doing these things where like, there's at one point in the video where you could see her giving the cameraman a thing of like, I'm gonna go, lo- I'm gonna kneel, and the camera goes down, and she's just talking directly into the camera, and I'm, I'm like. Oh man, I'm like, as you yeah. would say, chills. Yeah, yeah. yeah. And, uh, so, and I still so think I think oh, she's really yeah, attractive she now. Yeah, video drums. Yeah, video drums. Yeah. Video yeah, drums. yeah. yeah. Can we get her on the show? She oh my try. god, I oh I die happy. You know, mm-hmm. just just to have her on the show, absolutely. And she, from what I've read about her, especially like all the stories that people would tell about her in the early punk days, that she was super nice. I met her once at the Playboy Mansion. Is that really? right? And just like stood there next to her. I didn't. I didn't. I didn't want to be like Mr. Fanboy. It's like, oh my god, blah blah blah. So I just sort of played it cool. Just kind of, we were waiting for a photo op, and ne- she was next to me online. Did you say anything to her? Actually, no. <laughs> I will. I will say this, Miss Blondie. <laughs> could you <laughs> no. see? That's something that I would say. I know. I, know. I, I, I would. I would say this, Miss Blondie. There is something she does have some kind of science fiction, fantasy, horror related to her. And that oh, was video drum. Well, I also saw a photo of her, and next to her was one of those Shogun Warriors from 1978. Wow. Oh, really? Do you That's know that a toy. It, was it her? Or? Like she has in her collection or something, you mean? Well, no, I don't know where it was exactly. Joey but... Ramone. There's this famous Joey Ramone photo with Common Rider, and it's that <gasps> same Common Rider that's in Jungle. And I think no. they still have it. Oh, and I'm wow. telling you, if I had the money. 
I would buy that common rider yeah, thing. Yeah. It's old and kind of beat up, but it's, it's so like cool, a piece though. of history. Yeah, oh, yeah, totally. yeah. Anyway, mm. okay. Sorry, Sean. <laughs> All right, let's go. <laughs> Wait for the plane. I'm going to give the city a piece of my mind. <laughs> Weren't you going to soundproof? That's the thing, because like where we are, well, double paint, all, I, all the yes. houses double paint. You can't yeah, it all. Yeah, it's, right? it's, a, it's a chore, and uh, that's, it's, it's just a matter of time. Yeah. You know, I'm fine. I'm fi- Look, every once in a while. Every once in a while we hear something, but right now, I mean, for the most part, most of them we don't hear on the mic. Yeah, yeah. People a couple have, loud ones. People have complimented me saying how great our audio sounds. In well, fact, someone just compared recently... Compared to a lot of, yeah, I mean... Some kind of those are, other podcasts out there yeah. that really... You know what? Don't get me started. Right, okay, let's go. let's go. Greetings, everyone. <laughs> and welcome to a best and maybe not so best episode of Monster Party. Monster Party! Monster Party! Hold on, hold on. We gotta do that one more time. Because we're peaking. I think we're, oh. yeah, I think it ends test, test. Loud. I yeah. can't hear myself. You can't? Can? I cannot hear myself. <laughs> really? At all? Nope. You're blaring to me. Yeah. Hello? Oh, Jesus. <laughs> hello, hello. I still can't hear myself. Oh, are you must serious? Your, must be your headphones, maybe. Maybe. Or are it could be your them? ears. Is this on? I could hear myself before. Here, put a new here. <clears throat> Wait. Let's put a new hello, hello? Put a new dress okay, on okay, the Okay, this girl. is better. I oh. can hear. Oh. Okay. Try this one. <clears throat> See what people need to understand is when you when we use this audio equipment and it's it's like state of the art, but we use it. We use it on a regular basis. So you know, there's a little wear and tear oh, because much you better, know, much better. You know, because we're like we're a that's mom and pop whole, organization but here. But don't don't trivial, trivialize this. Tri- trivialize it? You no, know, I mean you make it sound like oh, we put a little a little tape recorder here and a little microphone. No, we've no, got no, sophisticated. Test. So we no, we're all good, right? We have sophisticated okay. stuff. Test, test. All right, cool. I think that's good. Let's yes, yep. but tr- again, Monster try not party. to go. Just kind of pull back a little yeah. bit. Monster here. party. <clears throat> pull out. Monster party. <laughs> okay. Oh, my. Greetings, everyone. <laughs> you all right? What happened? What? Why did you stop? Because you're... I, I, I got a little giggle. I can't have a little giggle? Okay. Uh, I can't giggle. You can. Okay, and I, I appreciate be, it. Everyone has to be Look, completely... No, I, I, I didn't look. realize how hilarious I am. You know what? Maybe you wanted to switch up your, you know, your little... Now, keep going. I can, I'm, I, look. Well, this has been great. <laughs> okay, ready? Yes, I'm ready. Another DC big movie from this year was Shazam, that I I, I, I think it was 2018. <sighs> was it? Yeah, I think so. The tail no, end of 2018. Uh, I oh, don't think it? so. I think you're Shazam, wrong. Shazam. Wrong again, Sean. <laughs> no. Uh-huh. Hold on. Here we go back and I can start over. That's that's. I mean, let me just. I've got it here. Well, we've got. If only there was an electronic device. I got that it. Could help I got us. It. Just give me a second. Give me a second. It does feel like a long time. Shazam, 2018 in your face. Ooh. This says, this I says, win. This says 2019. Well, Wikipedia IMDb, says, IMDb is never wrong. Wikipedia <laughs> says 2019. Really? Are you, are you serious? Interesting. Yep. Maybe they, okay. So we have to look up the release date. What's the release date? March wait, 15th, wait, wait. 2019. Oh, wait. I'm, 20... looking, I'm looking at a dog named Shazam. Oh. <laughs> Well, well, Sean, you were correct on that. <laughs> Shazam wow. Schwartz is a canine famous for his unprecedented razor sharp body movements. <laughs> okay, I'll bet mind. you that movie's better. Can you? Oh, I, I, okay, wait, 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 wait. I think can I we, can agree with you, Matt. Like, can, I was, can we I was start, disappointed. Can we start okay. over again? Oh, horrible. Okay. Excuse me. I wouldn't say horrible, but I was like horrible. I just let's start all over again with you. Go. Time for a listener shout out. Shout out. <laughs> wow! No, I'm not ready yet. Okay, right, okay. But uh, are you going to do your thing after? I can do it before or after. Usually we do it after. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Give me a I, second because there's a thing that I wanted to. I want to do a little shout out to uh, Josh Gilland. And okay. Sue sure. Murphy. Oh, mm. Sue Murphy. No. When you come back, I'll I'll brief you on this. <laughs> we got a complaint about Sue Murphy. <laughs> <laughs> we can't have Sue on again. Yeah. Sorry, guys. That was good. Though. That was fun. It's actually we covered a lot. Yeah, yeah. Was... there was a lot to cover. Yeah, if we do it as a regular thing, we should try to do it as the first episode for the new year. We should. Yeah, but it this means it means doing a lot of viewing in December. That's true. That's true. Vodka. 
Tend forward. Wow. No. Oh. oh, that's beautiful. Isn't that great? Look at the bottle. Where did she get that? I don't know. Oh man, I want to get one. <clears throat> well, yeah, it's, it's cool. Sue Murphy, and you're her friend. So. <laughs> well, it's ours now. Oh, is it ours? Whoa. You're sharing that? I'm. I'm gonna. It's gonna be in the place. It's gonna be in our hall of. Uh, so you're not opening room. it. I'm not opening it. Cool. You're gonna your keep honor. it. You're going to keep it mint in package. I am. Or mint in bottle. Yeah. Nice. Until a special occasion. You know, you, you bring up a really interesting thing because I have an opportunity to get a special Godzilla decanter that has oh, really? a, a, a special liquid in it. And I'm debating... Well, special the, liquid? Well, you know, alcoholic thing. And, oh, okay. and I'm thinking, man, if I... To, and to, op- to open it, you have to break a seal. Yeah. And I don't know if I want to break the seal. Yeah, well, true. it depends. Mm-hmm. Things like that. Where it's like, okay, I could break the seal on this thing, but but, then, but can I get a similar liquid oh, in a non? The same. It's not the same. You know, there's that famous uh, Spock from uh, Spock the motion pic uh, from Star Trek the motion picture, the Spock decanter. Yes, I have and, one. It's yeah. open though. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. God. We... <laughs> <laughs> so so you won. You won this one. Does that make you happy? Yeah, it's all right. He enjoyed yeah. the alcohol. <laughs> I don't think it would be good now. Oh, man. Yeah. yeah the Spock but it's decant- alcohol. It's yeah. alcohol. Not all alcohol is is like yeah. infinity. Are you are you suggesting that the Spock decanter that has the alcohol in it from 1979, 1979 yeah. you're saying that I shouldn't drink it? I would I would taste it. Why are you even asking it? You're not going to drink it. You're not going to open it because you're apparently you're going to be buried with it. If you drank it, then somehow you're like you know lesser. Yeah, yeah. (laughs) Nobody cares. All this shit is going to be. The world is ending. Landfill. Nothing is going to survive. Every toy you own will be landfill. See, it's all all going to be powder in about a year. That's where you're wrong. That's where you're wrong. You'll have your own little secret bubble of like (laughs) force field. That no, will... no. You, there are there are plenty of people out there that will say, "Oh, this is from the Larry Stroth collection." It was <laughs> oh, really? It was yeah. very Who's that? Who's that? <laughs> <laughs> Fucking cockroach people. <laughs> yeah, but for the that, apes, you're gonna be rolled. <laughs> you'd have to brand each of them, then, Larry. You'd have to put a sticker or something that says from the collection of Larry. Hey, hey, Glino. You know, it, smell this. It, it, it's seventy there. <laughs> <laughs> I will say this: it is true. You bring up a very good point because it's it's true that no one really cares what. What collector it came the item yeah. came from. What they care about is the condition of the actual item. So you are right. Until they don't anymore. <laughs> unless you know like ten thousand years from now. <laughs> someone says, Is that Larry Stroth from Monster Party? And I have a I have a mint and box item right. from his well, collection. Yes, because of Monster Party, your collection is legendary now. Is yeah. it? Yeah, that's yes. true. Yes, yeah, true. The podcast will live on forever. So <laughs> Ali- aliens someday will be listening to this. I see you. I see you. <laughs> In a bunker in a couple years. And it's just your little head sticking above with tons of boxes. You know, your wife and daughter are in these are in these like hammocks. Yeah. Oh my god. Oh god.